Hello, hello. Welcome to Canoebrook Country Club on a beautiful December night for the third leg of Pro Flight Paddle 2019. I am Patty Hogan alongside Dave Broderick for our first match of tonight, which will feature Drew Broderick and Roxy Anika versus Blake Anderson and Lauren Gebbia. Welcome, Dave. Patty, how are you? Great to uh, be here at Canoebrook Country Club for the um, another first for us of uh, Pro Flight Paddle. Uh, first mixed event on the uh, Pro Flight Paddle Tour. Dave, this is exciting because we have some of them, you know, the, I mean, talk about the woman, women here. These are rock stars. Never mind the guys, Dave. We, uh, this event tonight, we have a lot of sponsors. One of them is the New Jersey Women's Platform Tennis League, Dave, and they just finished another uh, great season, the first half, and they have a, um, they're a sponsor tonight, and I think we're going to celebrate at some point all the teams who won the, those divisions, and obviously women's paddle is uh, huge in New Jersey, and these four women out here are among four of the best mixed women's players in the country, let alone top women players in the country, Dave, and they're going to be able to stand up to what Broderick and Anderson and Bostrom and Araya have, have, you know, they're going to dish it all out. And it's going to be so fun to see the women respond. Well, Patty, it's going to be interesting to see also, just in the match we have here on live stream, with uh, Drew and Roxy playing Lauren and Blake, um, because Drew's played several times at the Nationals uh, with Lauren, and um, several times the their formidable opponent was uh, none other than Juan Arroyo and Roxy Anika. So it'll be an interesting mix-up here that, um, you know, teams are getting mixed up, going from, from uh, friends to foes, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Okay, so we're going to throw it over to Noah from Xenon for the intro of the players. Patty, so as hopefully everyone heard, we have a well-decorated set of players for tonight's event. Should be great paddle. I hope everyone is enjoying, is going to enjoy the paddle out there, watching it on live stream. If you're in the Summit, Milburn, Short Hills area, Chatham area, stop by to Canoebrook Country Club and come check out the action live. So, Dave, another unique thing tonight, and we're going to feature the brother-brother scoring team, Max McDonald, who has been with us with all the other Pro Flight events. And he's paired up today with his younger, better-looking brother, who's a senior at Syracuse, just finished his exams. Ryan's going to be, uh, you're going to hear his voice. He's going to be calling the score, Dave, because we cannot talk and keep score at the same time. So... 
you Brian, think, welcome. You, you would think after all these times doing it, we this would be have better practice. So, Ron, you want to practice once? How about say 15 love? Thanks, Ryan. Okay. We have a little technical issue with Ryan's mic. So Dave. Does it work? So Dave, mixed national champions last two years, Floor Hanish and Martin Bostrom. They're going to be on the other court. Roxy and Nika right here. Arguably so we'll one of the finest mixed Juan players in the game right now, Dave. Roxy, three in a row. Three among in a row. women's players, yeah. I mean, Roxy and Juan took out Heather Prop, Rod Bacher in the 2016 mixed finals. They took out Gebbia and Drew Broderick in the... 14 and 15. Yeah, 14 and 15. She's really one of... Um, She's um, so talented, Dave. She's got, you know, her overhead weapon, that roller thing that is a huge uh, a value for her to open up the court in women's play. I like that. She rocks a forehand, you know, not quite as hard as Long and Gebbia right now, Dave. Who hits their forehands harder of these two women, Dave? You know what? I, I got to be honest with you. I think Lauren probably hits it harder, but I think over the last couple of years, I think Roxy's been doing a great job of spotting it and not just, you know, years ago you used to watch Roxy play and she just was playing with sheer power. Love 15. So here we go. Drew Broderick, the lefty on the far side, and the host pro will start the match. Oh, first point ends. Good long point, feeling each other out. Unfortunate let cord there for Roxy. All right, Dave, so here we have on the far side, you see Anderson and Gebbia. Gebbia over in that ad court. Yeah, why, is she, why is she over there, Dave? I think we, we talked about it earlier that... Um, we talked about it off air. I think it's good to talk about it on air. You know, I just was prepping you for Drew, the question. Drew puts a lot of spin on the overhead, and I think Blake would do a better job of handling it. I think, um, you know, just because he's played with Drew, he's played against Drew, so he's seen it. There, there we see one of the big forehands by Roxy. So, you and, know, and Anderson just was wandering on the court there. Did he forget who his partner was for this match, Dave? Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing. That's how good Roxy is. I mean... And Rocky, Roxy's forehand's not concealed. Everybody knows what's... You know it's coming. All right, so first game to Anika Broderick. Dave, what's the average length of the points we're going to see here tonight? What do you think? Uh, you know, I, I would have to say that, you know, points are going to go on for probably 20, 25 shots. I think each point is going to be a little bit of a... A grind, um, you know. We we know Drew's very tactical, and um, I think Blake is becoming that way as well. So I don't think it's just going to be kind of bash and dash. I think there's going to be a lot of thought put into all the shots, and uh, Blake having a little trouble here, maybe rushing a little bit, faults two times in a row. Dave. Pro flight paddle, we're in year two. True or false? Blake Anderson has yet to win a match in pro flight paddle. Hate to start off with that, but that's a clue, Dave. I think it's <laughs> gotta be true. It's it's true, that's how tough the play is here. Blake's currently seven in, seventh in the country with Martin Bostrom, but to win a match <laughs> out in pro flight, it, it's really a challenge. Do we see Roxy? And Dave, tonight's format is unique. 
where the winners of these two courts playing now do not play each other in a final. This is just a standalone one match off, and then we'll follow this with women's play and men's play. You know, I think, Patty, it's a good, again, good mix of uh, the format tonight. I think a lot of people enjoy watching the mixed paddle. Um, you do see a lot more strategy, a lot more shot placement. Um, big forehand by Lauren there. And I think even with Drew and, and Roxy, when they get pushed back, I, I think Roxy plays that backhand side, so it's not, it's not going to be an issue for her over there. She's going to know what balls to take. And we see uh, Drew's well, over in the deuce court, Dave, and doesn't seem in any rush to switch sides with Roxy. Oh, he missed one wide. He's going to wish he had that one back. It's a great shot of the beautiful facility here at Canoebrook. They added a sixth court. Uh, when was that, Dave, a season ago? Yes, this is the second season that they'll have two courts, uh, six courts, the extra court they added. And how many men's teams, Dave, does uh, Canoebrook have in the men's league? I want to say I think they have six men and six women. It's definitely one of the bigger... Biggest programs in Jersey. Bigger programs in New Jersey, along with yeah. Indian Trail. Um, Indian Trail, up-and-coming Fiddler's Elbow. Where you just happen to be the new Rackets Pro Day? We're up-and-coming. We're not big yet. We're, but we're on the rise. Well, this is the season of believing, Dave. I, I believe you'll uh, be able to be a good asset to continue the growth there that... Uh, they're underway. How, how many how many years has Fiddlers had courts, Dave? About Fiddlers six? had courts No, only four years. Four years? Just okay. Four years now. And um, we're actually looking to add. We're looking to add two more. What a great get by uh, Blake there. You're looking to add more, Dave? We are looking. We're going to add two more paddle courts, I believe, shortly. Oh, that's going to be great. Big drive by Blake there. And this facility, they have six courts. They've got tennis courts. They've got two 18-hole golf courses. They had a monster renovation at this club a few years back and uh, growing membership. And this is another club where it's sort of a lifestyle club. They've, they've got it going, all the social aspects, all the parties. Um, and I know just like the Short Hills Club, Dave, Canoebrook is helps us out with hosting so many paddle events and what's the one most dear, near and dear to us is Junior Nationals, and both Short Hills and Canoebrook really have a willingness to work with us, and they do a great job, and all the kids at Junior Nationals, 200 plus, all get to come to uh, Canoebrook, have sit down and lunch, just like, just like the adults. No, it's definitely, um, we're in a great area with a lot of really good clubs that, that are looking to increase and help paddle grow, um, and I think the clubs that buy into it and, and are involved, um, you know, they know that helping out each other is only going to make their program better as well. So on the scoreboard, it says Broderick and Anika. Drew has always been a fan of Andy Roderick and really wanted to get his name spelled as closely to Andy Roddick as possible and I think we've got it achieved here but now we're gonna we're gonna lengthen and expand that that box and we're gonna give Drew another vowel. Vanna I'd like to buy an E. <laughs> e for fi uh, $50. There's one of those. All right so we got a break back and then we're back on serve here. Patty, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm watching, you know, we're out here watching the matches. I'm looking at the the second court as well. And um, for the first time, I, I heard uh, paddle hacks out in Chicago. And um, Juan is now known as the one and only. Oh, uh, what a good <laughs> volley. Stuff volley there. Catching Drew moving in too much. Dave, you talk about the growth of the sport. And you see Noah's company, Xenon. They're in their first year, really, of retail in production for the last couple of years. Uh, I played a warm-up match tonight with uh, our scorekeeper, Ryan McDonald, and Vince Broderick, spelled B-R-O-D-E-R-I-C-K. And uh, we played tonight. I, I wasn't prepared for play. I just knew I was going to be sitting inside Dave. But 
I didn't have gloves, but it was no problem because I had the heated grip of the Xenon paddle, which yeah, was no, it's, uh, very cool. It's, I think it's definitely going to uh, move the needle a little bit um, in the new technology. And it's pretty amazing because it's, it doesn't really add weight to the paddle. No, I Great I, volley there by Lauren. We're going to ask them how they do that. But, Dave, my point with paddle hacks, we have so many companies, Xenon, we have Viking, we have Wilson, we have Master, not in any particular order. And you have paddle hacks. How fun is that? And anyone who needs entertainment, go on Facebook and find those guys. Because yeah, no, I listen they to have the, the greatest day. ad I just saw the other day, Dave, for, uh, for Xenon, paddles and balls. So... We're going to get a quick news update, see what's on YouTube currently, besides Paddle. And we'll be back to the action shortly. <laughs> Dave, this is the time of year that, you know, you dream of things. And this is where you need to visualize. Just pretend you're actually seeing live Paddle right now. I'm going to make believe I'm sitting courtside. It's kind of like Santa and... You just have visions of Rudolph heading your way, down your chimney. That's what we're going to... So I think Ryan McDonald is going to keep... He's going to keep an eye on the score here. We'll be back to the live action any moment. Oh, here we go. Oh, but I believe Max McDonald is on the scorekeeping as well. I think we... And it's 3-2... I think we just, the plug fell out, Patty. Oh, well, that happens, Dave. Somebody pull the plug. Okay, so we're 3-2. Broderick and Anika uh, up on Anderson Gebbia. Two out of three set match here. And if you just joined us, Roxy is in the red, which is a great color for Roxy because she can light it up. And that's Drew Broderick in the ad court, the lefty. That's Blake Anderson. That was Lauren Gebby who just made that low volley. Dave, you know, paddle pros have to look around things. You don't really always get a clear picture of what's going on exactly at the time like we do now. And you just got to go with it. All right, Dave, super early in the match. Who's your pick? Uh, I, th I think you got to go with Drew and Roxy, but. I would be shocked if Drew and Roxy lost this match. I think that your point about Roxy earlier, how she can measure her drives, Dave, Lauren yeah, no, just... No. I think, and I think know, she spots it a lot better than she, you know, in years past. And that's her progress as a player. She used to be a ball striker Love versus, you know, like a strategist really thinking about where she places her drives. And now she totally does that, um, you know, has... I mean, her unforced errors, Dave, from four years ago to now, I mean, pretty amazing. And that's why she's really... Stepped up her game, no, and she's always one of the, you know. She's, she's always considered top four women in yeah. the game in everyone's conversation. When she enters a tournament, you know, you have to give her the nod as, as one of the um, contenders. So Drew just missed 30, two lobs in 40. a row long. And I have to be honest, he's made a lot of mistakes in the first five games. Game? Well, Blake's had a little serving issue yeah. out here in this and he match. he faulted to Drew, like I said, that's... To steal a line from Mike Cochran. That was almost like walking the pitcher. You know, the thing about Roxy, real fast, back to women's play. Finalists and nationals with Laura Barrett last year, Dave, out in Pittsburgh. You were there, watched that match. Love. Yeah, great match. Uh, lost to Gabby and Liz Cruz. But, I mean, Roxy's just done it all. She won the Lake Invitational with Anna Brazova. She won the Fiddler's all. Pro Flight event. She won Long Island Invitational with Floor Hanish. She won. She was second in Boston uh, last year with Laura Barron. Uh, and then she played with Floor. And that's what's kind of great about the women's game at this point, Dave. When people are available, they just jump in and they'll play with another great player. They're, they, won't, they won't sit out a tournament if their partner can't play. Right. Patty, I think you, you, you missed that one. Roxy went with the underhand serve. 
She gave it the big top spin surf. I was looking around to see who's here. Faces in the crowd tonight at, at Canoe Brook, Big, big Dave. crowd. We have a big crowd here. Um, I think too many people are hanging out in the hut. we got to get more people outside. Yeah, we got to get them outside. There's I, I think in the hut you can only have 200 people, and I think we're at about 212. Well, I think as people warm up, Dave, <laughs> I, I think more will go outside. But this is a perfect night for this event. Crisp, 25 degrees or something like that, Dave. Might be a little tough to spin the ball, but... So the colder it gets, Dave, it's harder for you to hit spin on the ball? It is. It's, if the spin doesn't, when the ball's harder, it doesn't take effect as much. They, I'm told by the experts <laughs> that they like it about, you know, 37, 38 degrees. So it looks like, Patty, right now, it looks like Drew and, and Roxy are letting Roxy hit most of the overheads over to Lauren's corner. Well, and you see the lefty righty uh, switch to get the overheads in the middle, and Drew's real happy to have Roxy right, like we hit said, just you know, as many shots as she would hit in women's play here. I don't think he can be a ball hog tonight, Dave. Do you? No, and, and I'll tell you what, he's... Warren's giving him 40, all he could handle 30. with all the drives up there, and I, I think it's, uh, you know, Roxy has a good overhead where I think Drew can just hang out on the net. He doesn't need to be hitting a million overheads. There we see the underhand serve again. Good return. So we're, we've seen lots of varieties of that. We've seen the sidearm, sort of a shoulder one, a little bit even lower underhand. Blake was telling me that Martin was uh, serving one that was waist level. What's the advantage of that sidearm serve, Dave? I think it's just to keep Use. the ball lower. Um, you know, it stays down lower. It doesn't pop up and allow the uh, baseline player to really take a good swing at it. Um, you, can't hit, you can't hit down on the ball as much, right? right You've got to right. hit you up on the ball, which makes first volley a little bit easier. A little bit easier, and it takes away some of the speed of the return. Dave, have you gotten Drew's Add Christmas in. present yet? Not yet, not yet. Patty, unfortunately, I haven't been doing much Christmas uh, shopping. Do you know what you're going to get him? Um, I mean, maybe we shouldn't say in case he watches this. Juice. Well, it's... Does he give good Christmas presents? Well, he does to my daughter, but to everyone else, you know, Add he gives you a nice handshake. <laughs> Vince, Vince, when Vince, the years that Vince is a good boy, he gets a lot of good Christmas presents. Games. Here's the ball. We can't go for There we go. So we're at 4-3, first set. Again, a shout-out to the McDonald brothers, Max and Ryan. Top of our scorekeeping tonight. Those college degrees are really paying off from... Bucknell education. Patty, you know Syracuse? Syracuse. Syracuse is one of the top uh, broadcasting news universities in the uh, country. Dave, kind of fun to see uh, Blake when he's getting ready to hit that slash overhead there, how he sets his paddle real quickly behind his, behind his head. You yeah, know, well, I think he, he's, you know, learned early on and he knows... Yeah, the ball wide by Drew. That's more than he's missed all year wide. Love. Drew always teaches that high energy paddle, that blue is better than green, Dave. A absolutely. But I was saying, I, you know, Blake definitely gets that racket back early. He gets the paddle all. set. But it also gives him more options. The earlier he gets the paddle back, he can spin the ball, he can roll the ball, he can hit a push overhead. He, it just gives him more variety. As we watch, he didn't miss that again. That was a point ago, I believe. 30 15. No, no. Another ball wide. 40 15. Dave, true or false? Canoebrook was founded in 1902. Patty, that is false. Canoebrook was founded in 1901. Nice. Game. Again, we're seeing too many, too many wide balls here. Four all in the first set.
Ooh. 15 love. Good spot. I think Lauren would like to have that one back. Yeah, she's not going to get that many easy looks uh, throughout the course of this match. Wow, another wide ball. 15 all. Dave, they haven't heard you preach. Hit their volley straight ahead, then you don't have to shift. This could be a turning point here, Patty. 15-30. 15-30. True or false, Dave? Drew hasn't cut his hair in three years. That I think it's true. It's either that or he, he's gotten hair extensions in the last three. There were a couple of rainy days recently. <laughs> he could have had time for it. Uh, 30 all. I think he may have been standing outside with Miracle Grow. See, I think that 30 all, that's, that's some volley, but you see the difference there where 40, 30, you know, even now serving at Blake at 4 all, 30 all, that was, that was a big return. Dave, we always preach, you know, at the moment of truth, when someone's coming at your close range, you've got to be committed to your backhand volley. And you can Game. see Drew and Roxy defended that situation where they, yeah, no, they were in every position. You thought they were going to lose the point, but they just played great defensive volley. That was a really good volley. You don't see Blake missing too many balls out of the screen. So we're at 5-4, first set, pro flight paddle. Third stop here at Kinnerbrook. Next up, Dave, I think we're headed to Philly. So that's Donnell, who's one of our production guys, not an announcer, but he might go into our announcing booth soon. So Dave, what's our next uh, event on pro flight paddle? I'm going to answer the question. Our next it's event, January, January 18th. 18th. We're at Manufacturers Golf and Country Club down in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. And their director of rackets? J.C. Cotto. Always puts on a great show. Oh, we had a blast there last, last year. year. Big party, big party. Biggest crowd for any pro flight event, I think, Dave. And Unfortunately, I think that may have been the coldest pro flight of the year. Well, they only uh, had look two at that courts. shot by Blake. Yeah, they only had two courts last year. They just added two more courts. Paddle's really rocking it love. in the Philly area and over in the area where manufacturers and Chestnut Hill with Scott Felatek. You know, all good things going on in Philly Paddle. 15 all. Big swing and volley there from Lauren. That's a good love drive. Love the shot up That's line. That's a good drive. Oh, a little bad luck. Bad luck at 15.30. Bad luck for who, Dave? Bad luck for Blake hitting that <laughs> left court on the drive. Good serve, though. Great hands from Anderson. Rocket from Broderick right there. 30 off. You can see Dave Lawrence hitting a lot of overheads all the way across court. She doesn't want to hit him straight ahead like we preach a lot. Because she's going over to Roxy, she's testing Roxy. Right. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to test Drew. And again, I, I think though they have to realize that they can get away with one, two, three. But when that number starts adding up, good move by Blake there. What a oh, Roxy almost. But that's a great move way to cut that ball off by 40, Blake. Forty thirty. Good anticipation there. It's noisy here in the paddle hut at Canoe Brook. It's too warm in here. It's too warm. It is pretty warm. We got people from a lot of clubs out here. I see Diana Matson, Plainfield Five Country all Club, Dave. Five all first set. We have the windmill in the house, Patty. Windmill from Plainfield Country Club. The windmill's here? Yeah. He learned paddle under the tutelage of Guy Curtis Moore. What's his real name, Dave? Curtis Guy Moore. Who's, got, who's the windmill? Oh, Tommy Walker. Tommy Walker. Oh, that's Tommy Walker. I've heard yeah. about that guy. A couple of good deep lobs there, setting up the drives. Love 15. Another good volley through the middle there. <laughs> 15 all. 
I think Drew paid Blake to, <laughs> to him him. give him that ball right there. <laughs> no, I think, you know what, I think Drew just guessed right. And, yeah, uh, he did. He, he's played a lot with Blake, and he knew exactly what he was up to. Wow. So I think that's 15, just a little bit deep 30. for that overhead, Patty. It's the only overhead error of the match, I think, so far. No, there's been one or two others on one that same two. shot. And there's uh oh. 15 40. There's the underhand surf. And here you go. You know, Roxy plays pretty solid sh set. Out Very few unforced game. errors. And then three in a row. Misses the overhead, misses a shot, misses a serve right there. And all of a sudden, big Just turn. Just like that, right? This is, the first lead, this is the first lead that they've had in the, uh, the entire set. Anderson's the pro over at Fairmont Country Club. Gebby is the pro at Hackensack Golf Club. Broderick is right here. Canuber Country Club. And Roxy Anika is Weston Field Club. Hi, Patty. Oh, Jimmy White's in the house here. He's Mr. Everything Canoebrook. I heard Jimmy might be singing in between. He's the halftime show. 12, 15. He's really starting to see Blake get on top of that net and really kind of anticipating where the drives are going to go. And he's... Well, I would think volley. that would be the strategy. You know, I'm not sure how much confidence he has in Lawrence Billy to hit the overheads, but it would be interesting for Blake to close in a little bit because he's, he's one of the quickest. He has super quick hands. I think he could capitalize a little bit out here. And see, there's that. Right, and then now look at they're kind of opening up and see they, they kind of, just by being patient, they created a little bit. No, there's another miss. 15 all. Big return down the line by Roxy. 15, 30. Yep, really smart shot. She got pulled just a little bit from Lauren. And I love that she just kept Blake honest. Second time she's gone up the line and returned to serve. 15, 40. They're going to have to start looking for it. I think it's a great mixed doubles return to serve. So it looks like we could have a uh, first set tiebreaker here, Dave. So, you know, there you have it again. This is like rinse, repeat cycle. Right, I, and I think, I was just about to say, I think Lauren's going to the well one too many times. Well, I think Roxy has to cheat over more to the side screen on that deuce court. So she just gets a full out forehand right. drive. And just give up. I think she's just playing a little the to the court. middle. Yep, a little too much. Because Lauren's overhead is... Real predictable right here, right now. See, there, here we go there again. There it is. There it is. Game. Wow. It's like we knew it was going to happen, Dave. Patty, I might leave a high-energy flyer laying around for some people to pick up. That's right. Not necessarily all the ones watching. All right. Tiebreaker, first set. Really good deep serve from Broderick. Gebby did it, you know, took something off her drive and put the ball in play. That was a great start. It's trouble. Oh, yeah, good overhead. One love. I think Blake went for that shot because Drew went for the other one, Dave, and exactly. Blake didn't really want Drew to outflash him here tonight. And Drew is quite pleased that Blake attempted that right there. I have to be honest, too. You're watching it, you know, the mixed version of Pro Fly Paddle. It's a little bit looser. We're seeing some different shots. We're see another one a little bit hard off that back screen, hanging out off the net. Love two. Love three. So they go from up 6-5 to down 3-0 in a tiebreaker here. The momentum swinging fast. And this is why I never... I don't bet against Drew often, and I, I don't bet against Roxy often in mixed. Really good shot from Anderson there. Yeah, that Drew, was a good spot. Drew was goating him into uh, setting up his Zorro forehand shot over there. And so I think if we watch here. Blake knew it was coming. Ah! 
Another ball wide. Another miss wide. 3-1. Another really good spotted drive by Roxy down the middle. Ah, oh, I love it. Four, one. Little sizzle, giving a sizzle. There we go. That's why she's considered one of the top women in the game. She, she can play defense, but she can play offense. What a nice backhand slash. She could probably show Blake how to perfect that shot. She a good, that was sort of a one-two punch. Roxy hit a good shot down the middle. All right. I expect a rocket from Anika right here. Four, two, or two, four. Two, five. Yeah, and those, both those serves from Gebbia were short in the box, and Anika and, and Broderick wide, both teed off in. on the ball. Just not the depth, Dave. It, yep. can, it can go anywhere, but if it's not deep, you're going to give right, someone an offensive return gonna, of serve. The better players are going to take advantage of that. Good overhead. Dave, can you hear me in this in the mic? I can, I can hear you. See a big big tomahawk overhead coming out of the corner Six, of Blake Anderson. Two. And so right here, Dave, <laughs> we've got a couple set points for Broderick and Anika. See they have back control in their net. Oh, man, what, an, what an overhead, Dave. All right, so set. that's the first set here, Pro Flight Paddle. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Success takes hard work. What are you guys counting? Making success a legacy takes discipline. PPAC Private. Your legacy, our discipline. Celebrity motor car vehicle. You'll enjoy exclusive red carpet treatment like no other. No matter what luxury brand you choose from Celebrity. Look, mommy, no auto cars are starting. The fastest way to get the status you deserve and the value you expect is to follow the star to a Celebrity motor car dealership. All right, Patty, we're we back here at Canoebrook Country Club for the uh, first installment of Pro Flight Paddle Mixed. The first mixed event. It's our third stop on our Pro Flight Tour of the 2019-2020 season. That's the voice of Dave Broderick, the director of rackets out at Fiddler's Elbow, and I'm Patty Hogan alongside Max McDonald, our master scorekeeper for Pro Flight Paddle, recent graduate of Bucknell, Anyone looking for, looking to hire, smart guy? The bison, or, Patty, the bison. That's right. 
So um, Broderick and Anika there went down 6-5. Anderson, Gebbia, just a couple of errors there. Kind of started that tiebreaker. Anderson went for the backhand slash, missed wide. They went down 0-1. And I think it all just came down to Gebbia serve on those last two points toward the end of the set, Dave. Yeah, when it just went out wide Roxy and shortened the box. teed off on a yeah. ball and Drew teed off on a ball. And I think that's the difference in the levels of play with the top, like, you know, the, the spins that Anika can hit on her serve, I think protects her in those moments where there's a little bit more pressure. And when there's tension, as we all know, it's much harder to execute. Lauren tends to hit with one grip. She's a one grip wonder. She, you'll see some players have a lot of variety in their grips and make changes all the time. You don't really see that out of Gebbia. She was raised by Louise who said, hit the next ball harder than you hit the last one. And That's she's right. brilliant and an amazing offensive player and just needs a little bit more variety, I think, in her servant overhead to I put her over the top in the women's game. And a little bit like we talked about with Roxy, just maybe spotting the drive a little bit more. Um, Patty, it looks like are we out there, are we waiting for the other court to finish? And I'm watching the one and only just missed an uncharacteristic overhead. Patty, should we give a shout out to the sponsors that are out there that make Pro Flight Paddle happen and the great events that they were able to put on? Yeah, we've gotten great sponsorship this season from Celebrity Motor Car Company um, and PPAC Private. Uh, this event also has some sponsorship from Xenon. We've got some sponsorship in other events from Midnight Paddle. Shout out to Mo Morrison. Mo Morrison, we UBS. miss him. We miss him in New Jersey. UBS, Richard Wright, Pleakley, the New Jersey Women's League we talked about. Gift to Graham is, is one of the new sponsors. And uh, we'd like to thank Athleta who's providing the pants for the women's players tonight. That's right. So if you're out there and you... Uh, you can find those in your local athletic store. The pants that all the Cynthia Jones women right are up in the Marstown, where we have a beautiful store, right in Marstown, off of the green. And uh, Athleta, I think, almost is the official clothing of all the New Jersey Women's League players. Dave, don't you think it's the preferred? Absolutely. Stop by and say hi, and uh, tell them Cynthia Jones sent you. Exactly. We also, Patty, we have a new sponsor. I think. Uh, maybe not too new, but I, I wasn't at the last event. Uh, 23K. What is 23K, Dave? Oh, I'm only kidding. I know what 23K is. Who doesn't know what 23K is? Okay, Dave, it looks like the action's going to resume soon. Um, Blake Anderson, I think, is out getting some coaching from his father, John. And he's back on screen here. Start off the second set. Following this, we're going to get some, uh, we'll have men's play and women's play. In the men's, we have uh, the Broderick Araya team teaming up once again, playing against Anderson and Bostrom. And we'll get Hanish and Cooper versus Anika and Gebbia. And I think those are going to be two great matchups. Again, big crowd here at Canoebrook. Um, I think everybody's going to enjoy the paddle that they're going to see tonight. Blake, you see him warming up a few underhand serves, maybe thinking about going to that underhand serve, right? And we're start of the second set here. Yeah, I think that's just a mistake when you keep hitting that ball out wide to, to Roxy's forehand. It's just too big. And I think that's where also Lauren, when she sets up Dave and a drive's coming, she she doesn't commit as far to her Love backhand. 30. And that, you saw it again, two points in a row right. in this game. And that's the difference. She likes swinging, hitting forehand, uh, like swinging forehand volleys. But the problem is you play people can spot the shots and you don't have time to go back and forth. Right. And that's 15. really the difference out here. I think a few times she's gotten caught off the net, a little too far off the net. Maybe if she knows the drive's coming, I'd like to see her get her a little bit closer. Well, 15, I just don't see 40. that her paddle is committed to right, the backhand. Right, right, right. See there another Game. forehand volley. 
another forehand volley missed. A couple of volley errors. Yeah, but but Patty, I, I try to tell, you know, all the people we coach, all the women I coach, men, you know, if you're not committed to that one shot, it's going to be tough for you to be a good volleyer. Well, as you have to close the net, Dave, we talk about it. When you know the drive's going and you close the net, you can't close the net with your paddle in between and trying to guess or try to react because the court is so small. And that's right, why you just don't have the backhand react. volley yeah. is how every pro will teach, try to convince people to play. I just think Lauren's so quick that she gets away with a lot of those forehand volleys. there Blake making a really good get fifteen love Patty I think if we were bowling I think that would have been a strike <laughs> some debris on the side of the court that was uh, taken out Fifteen all. And you can see these players are having fun out here. They're sort of experimenting on stop shots and because everyone's so good. 30, 15. You know, they're trying to come up with some shot making to try to see if they can just like outright win a point, which is so difficult at the highest level of play. Yeah, and I said that earlier that it, it just it's a little bit of a different feel. You know, the mixed I think is a little bit more social, a little bit more fun. Um, you know, obviously Everybody wants to win, but you know they're going to go for different shots. Um, we have a big crowd here. And this is not 40, the mixed 15. nationals. This is more of an exhibition match, and so they're they're putting on a show a little bit too, Dave, trying to show the different spins. Forty thirty. Good move from Anderson. Kind of hit, and moved in, a la Juan. The Juan and only. Force the error. Little deuce. Loose shot there, to say the least. Add in. A rare ace on a serve. Game. Patty, I think Marissa's home, one of the executives of ProFly Paddle, unable to make it tonight. I think she's a little tired. She had a couple of exams at Seton Hall today. Hopefully she did well. She's been a warrior for the ProFly Tour during these first two years. Love. I think she's um, she's going to look to go and um, start wearing athletic um, pants. She's already commented that she likes the look. All. And you see that, I don't know if Lauren knew, thought Blake was going to go, but she really stopped and kind of squared up. And again, she was guessing. Right. She was going to hit a forehand or a backhand volley, and that, that makes that first volley so difficult. 30-15. And Dave, this is all fun and games. In all seriousness, shout out to Jersey City, Bayonne community. Crushing couple of days here, but we're Jersey strong, and everyone's thinking about... The officer who was slain and, I mean, the terrible shootout. And it's just such a tough time. And we're all lucky that we get to be involved in something as fun as paddle. And we're all appreciative. Oh, absolutely. Heavy hearts thinking about everyone. 40, 30. Involved with that. And it's also another time of year, Dave. We know some people who have some health battles. And we're, we're hoping that those are the things that are most important in life. And this is so fun. And we're... Deuce. We're happy to be involved and grateful for both. You know, it is a. It's again going back to um, you know watching or listening to Paddle Hacks the other day, and one of their segments, Pat one of their out. podcasts, they were talking about how you know the paddle community, when it's all said and done, is just a good group of people. You know, everybody enjoys being out here. Um, you know, everyone's willing to help one another if needed. What a point! What gets? Yeah, because this is a game. These are adults out here, and they all, they Deuce. all, you know, the, these four work as teaching professionals, and that's their job. They get to go to, lucky enough to go to work at beautiful clubs. They get to wear sneakers. 
right. to their and job and get to be healthy, fitness oriented, and wear sweatsuits, not regular suits. Yeah. I hope they don't wear a full sweatsuit, Dave. So we're a two zero. We're a two one. Actually. Two one now. Two one. Broderick and Anika are up. Two one on Andrew Anderson Kebia. Maybe we can get a, a result of that other match that was completed earlier. We'll see if we can find anyone. It was uh, our defending mixed national champions for two years in a row. Hanish and Boster Patty, played Araya and um, Cooper. We're, we're Dave. Trying to get a score here. Love fifteen. And Dave, I'm picking the winner of that match. Who are you picking? I'm going mixed national champ two time won that match. I'm thinking they won it six three six one. Is that true or false? Love true, 30. Dave. I got the score. Fifteen by so thirty. Think the score, Patty. Here, I think it's two serving one. But it's two 15, one. 30. Broderick and Nika over Anderson Gebbia. The screen says three zero, but we're only kidding. It's 2-1. We just were seeing if anyone is paying attention. You see it, Deuce. Roxy going to the underhand serve again. And All right. In. That was game. Break a serve. I think it's 2 all. Blake serving again. Good serve. Good spin serve. Look at that return of serve again from Broderick. All. He caught Gebbia <laughs> closer to the service line in the first volley. He just caught Anderson, same place. Blake stopping pretty early and with these return of serves, puts his team in a, a defensive position right away. Right. I think they both have to get in a little closer. I think Blake was ready for that around the post shot there. Fifteen thirty. Little left cord luck. What did John Milbank say, Patty? You don't get let towards Lavin. The Bankster. 15-40. And you see Broderick spotting his drive, sort of taking advantage. And I think to your point right there, you're right. Kebia was off the net a little bit on that side of the court. I think she can go in closer. Because it's mixed, and Drew is not going to allow the return to serve. I'm 30, pretty confident. 40. No, I think he's looking at swing away on these returns, put pressure on them. Great volley by Blake there. We got another one going wide. Another tight shot here, Patty. Two all. Ooh. And again, that was a good speed, good pace drive. Roxy took a little bit off that. I think Blake was looking for the fastball, and she gave him the changeup. So, so, Dave, what's the score here? I believe it's three serving two. Okay. Drew and Roxy are up in the second set. If we can get confirmation maybe from the product, uh, production truck. 15, love. Dave. 15 all. This is a good time for a question for you. True or false? We know that Roxy's from Romania. True? True. Go! The North Pole to Romania. 15 30. Is 3,041 miles, Dave. True think, or false? I think that's true. Nice. And Dave, this is a question. This is not a true and false. How far is the North Pole from the South Pole? 
7,464 miles. Oh, my God. Dave, you are spot on. I thought you didn't pay attention in school. Patty, is that as the uh, crow flies? Dave, no wonder Drew hires you as a commentator for a pro or is, flight battle. Or is that by taking the uh, Alaskan Turnpike? Yeah, that, the, those the are North nautical South, miles. The North South Pole Turnpike. <laughs> Although going from the North to the South Pole, you may have to go through Alaska. They're back in their little traditional of Roxy staying off the net. So the score is 4-1, not 3-2, Dave? We, we have a confirmation from our scorekeeper. I just think the difference in this match, one thing, what is it, Dave? I hope you're saying, you're gonna say the right answer. No, I'm only kidding. There are so many right answers here. No, well, I, I think, you know, I, I just think um, Lauren and Blake are giving uh, Drew and Roxy a lot of chances to take swings. I just think it comes down to miss volleys. Yeah, no, no, and that's, I think they're giving them some chances to. I, I always think in these matches, high level matches, what? there's so little that separates them. But I, I just think, just a few more volley errors out here. Like, there we go. And Lauren nope, didn't hold her lane of coverage. Right, right. There's three zones. We always say the two-thirds rule. You shift to the side of the court where the ball's hitting. Drew hit two shots in a row. Lauren teaches, just stay over there on that line. I think she was just trying to help young Blake Anderson out there. Although I think he's all right up there, as you can just see from that, that volley. 15 all. Blake and his wife are awaiting their first child, due date, late January, I think the 28th. What do you think Blake's gonna be like as a babysitter, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> do you think they're gonna be watching cartoons early on? Who's gonna like going to the playground more? 15.30. No, I wanna take her to the playground or are they having a girl, Dave? Uh, I, I probably should know that, but I don't. Blake's going to be like, all right, grocery shopping, playground. 30. Who's got oh. what? He's going to be like, I got playground. That's it. Chuck E. Cheese, I'm in. Really good serve from Gabby out there wide to Anika. This could be a point, Patty, to go make it 3-4. You can go from 1-4 to 3-4, Dave? I, I Is that the magic of Christmas? Well, I think it's 2-4 right now. See a good cover there by Roxy off the nick. Come on! Nice slash. You know, you see these slashes, Dave, and there's two players in the game I always think about with these slashes. Think about Uline and think about the one and only Juan. Juan was the first guy I ever saw out on the court where he just would hit winners off that slash overhead drop shot. And there's a couple of women in the game now, Dave, that have that shot. See, there's that cross court ball again, and now they're under fire. They're under attack by Roxy's forehand. Just, you talk about hitting those volleys straight ahead, you know, and when they go across a couple of zones, then you has you have to shift as a team on the next shot. Right, oh, it just that's forces, a great forces movement. There. And see, Lauren got away with two great forehand volleys at this point. She's been waiting for that the whole match. Love 15. Crowd appreciated it outside. Wow. 
Bob? See, and I think that's 30. what I spoke about earlier, about, you know, Lauren getting on top of the net, really getting closer to the net, and I think it's paying off. The last couple of times, she's on top of the net, volleying the ball, stuffing it. Is it 4-3, just like that, the magic of Christmas? Fifteen thirty. Good return there. Fifteen forty. Game. Patty, I think it's four all. Because Blake started the set. I lost it. I think you're right. Dave smiled for the camera. Daniil. Big backhand down the middle there. Wow, what a volley. Oh, no. Love that would have been 15. some combination. Crazy volley. Sizzle overhead. Uh, you just see Bryder. Oh. oh, my God, what a volley from Lauren. Oh. Love 30. Patty, the action's heating up. The 200-plus uh, fans here at Canuber Country Club, some in New Jersey. Oh, yeah. I see a lot of clubs Club represented. 40. Mendham, Menacing, Plainfield Country Club, Canubra. What other clubs, Dave? Mendham Golf and Tennis. Menacing. Did I just say that, Game. Dave? In addition to the clubs that I named, can you name others? No, I think we're... Uh... It's hard to see past because we have Juan here is just glued to the action. And we can't really see past him. So we're 5-4, Broderick and Ika, Broderick to serve. Oh, boy. Oh, there it is. Wow. She had to have learned that from Juan playing mixed doubles. Love. We, we're going to have to ask Juan about that. <laughs> yeah, Drew's rousing the cloud, crowd a little bit here. Fun shot. Great shot. 30. Love. Did Drew duck or that one he, over his head? He doesn't really have to duck that much. And it, and it wasn't out by much. That's a good return, oh, good volley. What a volley there from so far back. Oh, and then a good yep. soft touch over here. 30, Great shot. 15. See, there's just one I think maybe going for a little bit 40, too much 15. there. You see Lauren practice the shot and aim higher over the net. You know, Drew is off the net. Just make him volley. Let him volley. I just think you have to play different shots when the score is close at the end of the sets. And right. that's what separates That's why when you watch club the cream level, of the when, crop. You, when you talk to club level players and they say they don't know what the score is, how can you play if you don't know what the score is? You've got to play the score. You've got to adjust your shots. Yeah. 
Can you hear me, Dave? Can you hear me now? This is not a Verizon ad. Dave, I see some Flex League players here. Love. Douche. Do you know there's 16 teams in the New Jersey Flex League now, Dave? Want me to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, Shout out to Leslie Stitska, our second commish. Tara King started us off three years ago. And Leslie Stitska has uh, become the commish this year and done a great job. 16 different clubs, women who play on weeknights and weekends. Who Patty Fidlugelbo has working. a Flex League team. Say it again, Dave. Fidlugelbo has a team in the Flex League. Exactly. Oh. And the team's just finishing up its fall season, just like the New Jersey Women's Platform Tennis League finishing up their first half of the season. I think we're back to Deuce. And see right there, Blake had Roxy way off the net. Right. She wasn't closing. He didn't have to make it that good, especially when you're down in the set, down in the match. And the match is near an end. And the match and I think that's it. has Onto ended the there. Screen. Broderick Anika, 7-6, 6-4. Patty Hogan here with Dave Broderick. That finishes up our first match tonight out of Canoebrook. Founded in 1901. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Success takes hard work. Making success a legacy takes discipline. PPAC Private, your legacy, our discipline. What are you guys counting? Stars. Where do you see stars? On all these cars. Spot a star on a car and you're looking at a celebrity motor car vehicle. You'll enjoy exclusive red carpet treatment like no other. No matter what luxury brand you choose from celebrity. Look, Mommy, no all our car is a star. The fastest way to get the status you deserve and the value you expect is to follow the star to a celebrity motor car dealership.
welcome back to Canoe Brook Country Club. I'm Patty Hogan alongside Dave Broderick and Mick Doya. We have a women's matchup here. Lauren Gebbia from Hackensack Golf Club paired up with Roxy Anika from Weston Field Club. We've got Annika Cooper from, who plays out of Bedford Golf and Tennis uh, teaming up with her regular partner. Flora Tennis Hanish from Westchester Country Club. Dave, what do you think about this matchup? Uh, I think it's going to be a good match, Patty. You know, I think we're going to, again, I think this is this could be a rematch of uh, Westchester Country Club last year. Is that correct? I believe those were those pictures were uh, were exactly the match. And who won that one, Dave? Do you uh, remember? Yeah, I think uh, that was Roxy and Lauren. Um, walked away victorious on that one. They did. Uh, Hannes Van Sternberg. Uh, or Annika Cooper, I should say now, former national champions. Lauren Gebbia, former junior national champion. Roxy Anika, three-time mixed national champ, runner-up in the finals. We're going to throw it over to Mick Erdoya. Mick is... Welcome to the booth here, Mick. A Thank local you. pro right now <laughs> with the distinction of actually, in between, he's finishing up a great pro job over at Essex Fells Country Club, and he's moving over to Montclair. And Mick, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about the amazing support and that incredible, passionate membership at Essex Fells, where they have so celebrated you and you've celebrated them for all these years. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> obviously uh, still a uh, couple of things to finish up for this season, but uh, I think the entire membership at Essex Fells uh, are, you know, and have been very great and uh, I cannot thank them enough. I think, uh, you know, if anyone's ever played an event at Essex Fells knows uh, how, uh, how much, uh, how great of a paddle community it is. You know, we always held the, the league classic semis and finals that are coming up. Uh, Dave remembers from last year. Um, <laughs> oh, Monday night under Monday the lights night at Essex, Essex Fells, Fells is you know, such a great atmosphere. You know, the whole town pretty much comes out. So, uh, I Mick, think if I could just interrupt you for a second, I can tell everyone out there that Vinny Zerdi purchased $1,500 <laughs> in food for Monday night. So come yep. on out. Yep. Everybody come on out to Essex Fells. Correct. So uh, biggest party of the year. But, yeah, you know, back to I've had a, a great run, uh, almost five years. So, um, you know, uh, sad to leave, but uh, excited for a, for a new start at Montclair Golf Club. So, uh, yeah, so everything everything is good. Yep, and they are doing a lot. They're pouring a lot into their club and investing in their facilities and enhancing their pros, uh, you know, their pro offering. And it's um, we know that they have a passionate membership as well, and that's a yes. whole new challenge for you as a, as a pro to take it on, Mick. And yep. So they'll be uh, – we, we wish you the best in – Dennis Kuzak and everyone at Essex Fells, they've done an amazing job in being supportive for you during your professional career yeah. so far. Yeah, I thank you. They're, they're, they're beyond great, so I, I appreciate it very much. So what do you think, guys? Thoughts on today's match? Who's going who's gonna to win that one? All right, so... Well, I just, I'm just i going to throw out there that, you know, Team Roxy, Lauren, uh, they're not going to see a ball that they don't like to drive. They are a phenomenal team together. They don't really play in open play. We've seen them at Pro Flight several times over the last two years. And they've dominated play. And some, co some questions are out there around Annika Cooper. She's got a bad arm. She hasn't played, Has she played at, at all. Is that the first time she's playing this year? I or? think this is going to be a real test. Right. Um, but she's playing with uh, Flora. And they're a seasoned team. They played well. You know, they've had some great success and Former results. Former national champions. Right. And, um, you know, so they're... All right. They're going to battle. And here we go. The start of the... Oh. Right off the bat, we see a big forehand. Ooh. And again, the format for today is uh, two out of three sets. Two out of three sets. We'll get, uh, we'll get to watch the first set of this match, and then we'll uh, switch over and get a set or two of the men's match. And then is it regular scoring, uh, third set breaker? Or I think they're uh, playing this out tonight. Okay, all right. Men's match will have uh, Broderick and Araya versus Anderson and Bostrom.
good overhead there, good spot straight ahead. Dave, that's the first time in two hours we saw Kebia hit a straight ahead overhead. She's one for one. Every In the mixed match, she didn't hit one ball. She didn't want to go with Drew Broderick straight ahead, <laughs> hit everything cross court. All right, we have a break of serve to start. Not a surprise. I don't know who won the toss, but <laughs> against right. Anika and Gebbia, I'm pretty sure. And Patty and I tell everyone. They love returning. That wants to listen, you know, there are more breaks to serve than there are holds. If you win that toss, you elect to receive. So Lauren Gebbia served first. That's Anika at the net in the red shirt. Flora Hanish in the ad court and Annika Cooper now in the ad court. Good deep volley. And I, I think they're going to test Cooper here. She's She loves hitting her two-handed backhand. She's got a bad wing, so I think she's going to probably hurts her more in her forehands to hit. So I'm sure she's going to be moving out of that side to uh, try to set up a lot of backhand drives. She's a little bit forcing it a little bit, you know, but I think as this match goes on, they're going to they're gonna settle in and be patient. And you know what? In this women's match, we have um, our sponsor, Athleta, has outfitted the women with their uh, nice warm cold weather gear for nice. this match out here. And we see Athleta all over the Women's Paddle League in New Jersey. And Cindy Jones has helped facilitate the sponsorship for the women for this event. Kind of wish I was playing, Dave. <laughs> Do they have short versions? <laughs> I hate to hem. <laughs> Sweatpants. Mick, speaking of this women's only final, name the country that has an island exclusively habitated by women, with 300 women making up their year round population. Can you name the country? I think I know that country. <laughs> I think, at first, I thought it's a trick question, but I think I know that. Yeah. Estonia. It's the seventh largest island in Estonia. <laughs> you didn't know you were going to... You, you know, we had a top... There was a top 30 paddle player in the women's. I think she was top tw 30. And she's from an island. Christine Metz she used to play with Chill Fair two uh, years ago. Dave she, knew that. Dave's Dave kind of that, like yeah. the answer man. Mick, true or false, North Pole is 2,142 miles from Estonia. True. I mean, you're in the hot seat here. <laughs> Dave is relieved. You've never tried to walk there, have you? <laughs> only when it's only in the summer because it, then it's dark too. All right, good ball. And that's Floor Hanish. Some of you may have seen her on Instagram. I believe she has the most followers. Of, of all the paddle pros, for any sure. Paddle Not even close. Pro anywhere. Not even close. Dave, how many do you have? What's your follower? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mick, how many friends do you what have? What is that on Insta Twitter? Instagram. What's yeah. Insta Twitter? No, I'm, 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 my wife is doing that in our home, so she's really good at that. So, I mean, me not so much. So. Nick, I still have a flip phone. I don't know what follow is, what you mean. <laughs> Dave, you still have walkie-talkies with your wife. Are you kidding me? You know me? what? But nowadays you can get ones that go really far. So that's Annika Cooper serving. Looked like a pretty good service motion. Even a better return to serve motion. All right, so we're three games in here to the women's match at Pro Flight Paddle here at Canubra Country Club, Summit, New Jersey. If you're out there, stop by. If you're doing some holiday shopping over at the Short Hills Mall or where they have this live 
streamed, I'm sure, on all the TVs. Stop by. So first set. So I think it's three love. Oh, you see a little wide, little impatient shot there. Mick, can you hear me? I can. Can you okay. hear me? I can hear you, Mick. Okay, can you great. hear me now? This is great that we can hear each other. We're sitting next to each other. It's right. pretty amazing Underhand that serve. my um, soup can and string is actually working and we can hear each other. So, guys, I don't, you know, you've seen a lot this year. So, what are your thoughts on, uh, I just saw Roxy doing an underhand forehand serve. What are your thoughts on that this year? We, we talked about that a little bit earlier. We see a lot of the top players are going to it. We've seen you hit some, Mick. Yeah. You like it? I do, and you know, I uh, I made sure I did before Johan Durant did it at Fiddler's, so I, I, I take that that I was I was doing the first this year, but uh, I think it's a good option, and I think all the I actually been trying to you know teach that to some of the ladies uh, in my clinics too, because if if someone has a, a decent forehand swing, uh, I think it's not a bad option to you know a give your give the returner a little different look and uh, just let them drive the ball lower, a little lower contact point. I think it's... Uh, well, the ball, right, the ball stays yeah. lower. You're not hitting, you know, we, we teach all the time and we see yeah. one of the big problems with the serve is, you know, people going up, taking it too high and spiking the ball down. And now the returner, you yeah. know, not only having an advantage, but they're also yeah. hitting the ball down at the, at the, the team running in. So yeah. to your point, I think that's one of the great benefits is you can keep it lower. Yeah, because, you know, uh, as a, as a as a returner as a server you're probably a little bit disadvantaged anyway so why not just to mix it up and, and give them different looks so uh, I, I encourage all the league players to to practice that and at least have a as one of the options you know uh, well I, I think you've got to always be able to mix it up and the more alternatives you have I mean when when something's not going right you've got to have a way to change and serving sidearm is a way to change it up a little bit and I think right now I'm looking at this match. I hope uh, Anika and Flo are able to mix it up a little bit because it's going away pretty quick. And I'd, I'd actually like them to see a, a throw in a little bit of a transition play and same thing, maybe stay back a little more and let them, you know, let Roxy and uh, Lauren, you know, beat them because I feel like uh, that more of a traditional position uh, Formation is definitely favoring Lauren and uh, Roxy right now when they're when they're hitting their overheads and they're they're setting up their drives. So I'd like to see a quick you know blitz, stay back, you know a little little different play to break the rhythm. But we'll see. I got to be honest. During that point, I think Roxy and Lauren hit about 50 amazing volleys. They were uh, Flora and Annika. They were bringing the heat there. Yeah. And I think a little bit like Patty to what you said before earlier on when we were doing the mixed match, you know, it's it's coming down to drives and volleys. Who's who's making more volleys? Yep. Great night here at Canubra Country Club. Perfect temperature. It's about 37 degrees. What I'll be interested in seeing is uh, Floor when they made their, uh, you know, when they made their rise in the game and got that win in Philly at Nationals the following year. I think she became the player who dictated play a lot and to mix point. She threw in the kitchen sink in matches, surprise blitzes, different things, and so. And here she is over in the ad court, which I, I'm, I, I would be shocked if they didn't get her over there more in this match. Because she's been playing all season, and she's fresh. She practices all the time. She's a worker bee to, you know, improve her game all the time. And Annika just hasn't played that much. And I think she could disappear a little bit more over in that deuce court, maybe. But I like that last point, you know, what I just mentioned, that Flow stays serve, stay back, and redrive off the deck, I think. That's a very smart play to, to mix it up. And I, you know, uh, you see the last two points, it's a little bit of different rhythm. Uh, and right away, they're, they're one point away to be back in the game. Right? So 3-2. So that's good. It's good. It's a 
good comeback. Right, I think they're bringing a little bit more offense now. They're hitting a few more drives. But again, I think the key is going to be volleys, being able to withstand the drives of um, Lauren and Roxy. Hannah Shin Van Sternberg uh, Cooper finished third in nationals last year. They won the Short Hills Invitational, Dave, as you recall, as the host pro of that event. They won the Midwesterns, and they finished third at Boston. Well, quality finishes, Patty. Quality finishes. Dave, so you, you talked about the volleys a Love lot. Love 15. What do you think between, you know, they're all great volleyers and obviously the best, but who do you give an advantage of? What team is a better volleying team? Or even, like, wh who do you think is the best 15 volleyer all. on the court between those girls? Well, that's a good question. I, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, and I think, um, you know, if uh, Flora and Annika can spot their drives a little bit, I think you can catch um, Roxy and Lauren with that flip in the paddle, forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand. And you see right here, it's, it's produced a couple of short volleys, but they were able to recover. Um, I also think, you know, the team that tries to keep the ball straighter Patty and I talk about this in a lot of our clinics, but, you know, it, it's one thing to be able to volley the ball back when it's hit hard at you. It's another thing when you're moving and the ball's coming hard at you. So I think the team that's just going to stay in good position, you know, stay committed to the backhand volley and good positioning, I think there's a good one-two combination. So who's it going to be, Dave? Make a bold choice. You know, I think... Um, Come on, Dave. Make a choice. I think... Uh, Flora and Annika. I think they're going to tighten it up a little bit at the net. They're going to be in a little bit better position and you know, because you see less forehand volleys coming out of that side of the court. Okay, I'll take that as an answer then. That's your final answer, Dave. Final answer. Right. Patty, did you know that last night um, I did not know any of the uh, people in The Masked Singer? I did not know that was Victor Oladipo. As the thingamajing. Dave, I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't watch Masked Singer? <laughs> nah. All right, so three all. So. We don't have cable, Dave. Love so Lauren and Roxy were up 3-0. So for the ones who just joined us, we're back at three all. We'll come back here. Um, they are streaky players. And they definitely got, you know, caught the momentum here, so we'll see if they can keep going and take the lead first time in this match. Sometimes we talk about who you it's... See that right there? That was good positioning. They kind of forced the error by not really giving them a spot to hit to. We talk about who it's critical to get off to a good start in a match, and I think it's Cooper and Hanish critical for them to win this first set Yeah, you know, in this match just because Annika has not played this year. And the fast play favors Anika and Gebbia. They just pl they love to just pound, pound, pound. Right. And we've and what I mean about streaky play is that I've seen them. Well, they'll play a 15-minute stretch and not miss one drive, and then all of a sudden play a 10-minute stretch and just make some loose errors. 15. Yeah, I think 40. with uh, Lauren and Roxy, if you let them get out to a lead and you let them, you know. Sort They're of, great front runners. Absolutely. And, they win know, the first set. They win matches. And the more speed they pick up and momentum they pick up, they just, you know, it keeps rolling. And, I mean, Anika is just on a roll. We talked about it a little bit in the 30, first match. 40. Finalist APTA Nationals last year with Laura Barron. She won the Lake Invitational with Brazova. She won Long Island with Floor. Second in Boston with Laura Barron. Third in Midwesterns. She won Patterson Damn. with Floor Hanish. That's pretty good. So she's on an unbelievable streak, feeling very confident out there. Let me see we have a break of serve there. Anika Gebbia back up four games to three here in the first set of the women's match. Coming to you live from Summit, New Jersey, Canubra Country Club. Good crowd here. 
good crowd. Or the huts popping. Some of our sponsors. We have P Pack Private. We have Celebrity Motor Car Company. Some of the other ones we have Richard Wright, Bleakley, 23K, UBS, Midnight Paddle. Again, shout out to Mo out in Chicago. Xenon Paddles here. Noah's in the house. New Jersey Women's Paddle Tennis League, big sponsor of Pro Fly Paddle. And Giftagram. So if anyone's out there looking for a gift to send me, please stop it. Gift the gram first. So it's a very, very offensive play here from both sides. I feel like if there's any chance to take the drive, <laughs> it's coming. So as you see, the net team is playing pretty close to net there. So it's, a, it's definitely a fast play, uh, which I think ProFlight has you know, uh, all those matches over the last two seasons has uh, definitely been fun paddle and, and uh, fast, fast paced play. More free, maybe. Mick, one of the things I'd love for you to talk about briefly is the different tactics around lobbing, where you can see Anika thrown up really high lobs, Gebbia threw a lob. nice backhand lob up, where in the men's game, you don't see as much of the people going for the height because they the lob a little bit shorter so that it doesn't give their opponent time to wind up on a shot? Yes, so that's one of the, especially when you play someone who has a big uh, cut shot, then uh, you don't want to, you know, by lobbing it high is uh, sometimes it gives them time to set up for a spin. So I feel like in that level, it's important to be able to move the lob around versus I feel like moving the lob around might even lob. be more important than lobbing it high and deep, you know? So I think that the, the lob, and I, you know, I try to tell this to the people I teach too, uh, that the location of the lob is, 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 is critical. So you're able to have both of the net players hitting overheads and uh, so that way you're able to start dictating the, the game on the baseline, you know? And uh, at one point, you know, if you play up the higher level, the, the, if the screens is not an issue, then uh, the short lob is not, is not really, you know, obviously, you don't want to lob super short, but it, the, the short lob is not end of the world, yeah? so you're always able to stay in the point. Versus where in tennis, is like you, short, you lob short, you lose the point, done, right? So that's kind of the, the main thing. But See, Patty, I think we saw a miscue there where not only were we going for forehand and backhand overheads, but we're also going 40, for 15. Uh, side to side, hitting the ball side to side, creating an opening down the middle where we, again, talk about keeping that ball straight ahead. Dave, you got to be a team player, whether you're on the court or in the announcing booth. 40, 30. Dave, are you uh, gearing up for League Classic? Uh, I heard uh, you and your partner are uh, the Vegas favorites uh, for this year. So no, no, if no. I hear correctly that you and your partner, George, uh, George T, so I, I heard you guys are getting ready for a tournament. No, we, uh, you know what, I, I'm hoping to be there on Monday night, but... Um, I think uh, Chef Vinny Campbell might be rooting against me this year. Yeah. Last year, he, I was told I made it too far in the tournament. <laughs> I said, well, don't worry. I don't know how often that's going to happen. But it is, a fun mon it is a fun Monday night. There will be about four or 500 people out there watching at Essex Fells. Love, 15. We have three serving five here in the first set. I think the men are starting to warm up for the next match, the men's match coming out. See, Mick, when you ask Dave the question about volleys, yeah, I'd like to talk about more about volleys too. So I'm Dave. all about volleys, yep. and I just think the quickness that Gebbia has in Roxy in women's play, unless it's against maybe the forehand of Nicolescu, I don't see that they get hurt by flipping their paddle back and forth. I just I feel like you mean hitting both volleys forehand? Yeah, not committing to yeah. a backhand as much as you'll see some players. Yeah. Where you could see Drew 
was spotting his shots at Gebby and just breaking her down on the volley, where I just don't think either of them, uh, Cooper or Hannish, hit the ball hard enough that they're going to break them down that way. Well, I think it's a good point because, like, I'm a lefty, obviously, so being a lefty, you quite frankly, you know, with an expe exception of Drew, but I, I kind of, you kind of have to play the forehand volley, so it, it depends on the pace of the play. If you're able to flip around, it's, it's as, and you're able to manage it, you're fine to flipping, so it's not a big deal if you don't commit to a backhand volley all the time. But um, I think one more thing that I, I'd like to point out from the players is that I think volleying can be different whether you're volleying close to net or when you're off the net. So I think it's a, it's a different volley being, you know, and uh, so like some players are more comfortable volleying on top of the net and some players are volleying off the net and some players are comfortable volleying <laughs> anything, right? So uh, uh, I always like to look at that who I'm playing against. So I'd oh, like so to challenge that person. You see their floor, kind of floor, and um, Annika knew that that was coming back hard. So like to your point, they got on top of the net to try to, you know, minimize the damage of that of that drive. All right, so 5-4, they're going to have to serve it out. Um, this will be the toughest, uh, usually the toughest game of the set, the last one. Okay. Mick, we have in the crowd Richie Berger, Roxy. 15, love. Formerly at Essex Fells, now playing out of Fairmount Country Club. I heard he has. Uh, he's getting. He's tuning up for Lee Classic Two. He's getting uh, ready, coming in with a big seed this year. Hope he's got his rain rain boots ready for Saturday. Uh, got here we have a rain all day forecast. Yes. Fifteen all. All right. Good lob there by. Uh, who's that? Florentina with a good lob. Caught Gabby a little bit close to the net. Okay, so you see, I like that little formation there. Switch. Now it's interesting. It's 5-4 in the first set. And this is the first time that they've 15, gone to the 30. Australian or the eye position. So they're, they're mixing it up a little bit, showing a little different look. I think I encourage all the... You know, all, any level, but especially, you know, league players to, to be comfortable with different formations when they serve. You know, again, it's uh, even if you don't necessarily win the point, I think you're doing it by giving the returner different looks. So uh, I feel like it's uh, it's definitely something every player should have their record. And you see the pros, they do it all the time, you know. And, and you can you can do it depending on the side you match up, but I encourage all the league players to, to learn, you know, be more comfortable playing formation, serve, stay back, uh, you know, anything to do to, to throw off the, the returning side because the returning side is a huge advantage. So, um, so break point. Ooh, close one. Good volley. We got uh, Mr. Yeah. Noah uh, Xenon paddle in the house with the new, uh, have you seen that new paddle uh, with a grip warmer? Oh. oh, I played with it tonight. Yeah. No. The handle got so hot, Patty had to turn it off. What do you think? Diana Madsen just playing field. She doesn't know we already gave her a shout out. And the heated paddle, Mick, yeah. I, How I, was had, it? I had a great warm-up to match tonight, I and I used it. I didn't have any gloves here, came poorly prepared, and the Xenon paddle just saved Love me with that 15. heated grip. Patty, would you say it's going to be the hottest product of 2020? Uh, it's going to be the hottest product, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many does he have in stock? Uh, he's got plenty in stock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's taking pre-orders already before before holidays? Uh, this. Uh, yeah, so Xenon paddle, xenonpaddle.com, find the one. Instagram. Noah is a great guy. Uh, he's doing good things for the paddle, so definitely check out the products. Uh, longest lasting ball, so good shout out to him. Also, uh, as of last week, a sponsor of the 
Mount St. Dominic, New Jersey high school paddle team. So he was kind enough to hook us up our girls with, with the paddles for the season. So uh, great thanks well, to Well, I him. didn't even know that story. Christmas has come early. Yeah, yeah. for the girls of the Mount. Oh, a little cutter. I'm sure Sister Fran over at the Mount appreciates it, <laughs> as well as the faculty and staff. Yes, correct. All right, five Lorenzo Silvio, the <laughs> athletic director. Yep, because you know I'm officially the, the paddle coach at the Mountain Dominic. And actually, this is your second year as the coach. Correct. And then Melissa Locaine, our uh, team uh, moderator, she's in the crowd here all. today. Um, the captain of the t the captain of the girls team is watching Sophia right now, babysitting at my house. So you know, every everyone is involved today. It's so. a team effort. Man. It's team, a team effort. effort. Vic, do you know true or false? Marissa Broderick is a graduate of Mount St. Dominic. True, correct. Yep, I did know that. All right, so a little quick change around. 40-30, Dave. 40-30, oh. Sound like we may have had tempers flaring. Right, and even though this is not a full tournament, these players are they're com they're competitive the whole time. This this means a lot to them. They're playing fun crowd out here, enjoying this. This is an interesting formation. I haven't seen Add that out. close to net there. So I could never get up if I started that low. I would never personally do that. <laughs> so two falls from Annika from set point. Oh, Deuce. for five all. This is interesting. You see a little bit of the eye formation there from H Hanish and uh, Cooper. This is what they did last season a lot, where Floor would kind of play the forward position yeah. of the two, and Cooper would kind of roam on the baseline, pick up everything that uh, Floor didn't pick off. Yeah, but I think, quite frankly, on that on that level, and you could tell from the from the men's men's matches as well, there's a significant amount of players serve and stay back. You know, it's uh, it, it, the game. The, the game is changing over the years, and I think it's uh, it's almost like in tennis. I mean, if yes. you think about it, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was always serve and volley, right? Now, on the top level, you have two guys playing back, right? So. Not that it's one to one, but you could definitely see in Pal also that the serving volleys, Add you know, it's out. It, the drives are getting better. Yeah, so just the return of serves are yeah. the dominant shot. And you're still playing on one serve, and uh, so I, I think it's gonna go more this way. And, and you see these skills are right. You have the technology at the highest the level of the players. I don't, I don't see this being the I formation real successful in league play generally. I just think these guys can cover an amazing amount of the court. Great move, got burned a little bit. Good move by Flo, but got, got burned a little bit with the blitz, so 6-5. Um, but I think, too, we have to go back and talk about it where, you know, there were probably three or four faults in that game. One of them came on, you know, game point. And, you know, we try to preach that to anyone that'll listen, that you can't, you can't fault three or four times in a game or you can't miss two or three returns in a game and expect to win it. It's just, it's too hard. It's too hard of an uphill battle. So we're 6-5, Anika and Gebbia up in this first set. After this set, we're going to be switching courts, and I believe Mr. Noah Zenon will be raffling off. I think he'll be announcing the winners of uh, the hot paddles. some of his hot paddles. Nice. Did, I, did you put your name on the raffle, Dave? Oh. Patty, did you do that? I don't know I did, if I did. I you know, I didn't. I'm going to make sure Rachel does it. Yeah. That was probably, what, six drives in a row from the baseline? That's Gibby and Nika right there. Every time I've seen them play a pro flight event, that's just what they do. They feed off each other. Forcing shorter and shorter volleys till they can pick a spot and force an error. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry. And Monica's like, yeah. 
That's sure. Mick, do you say you're sorry? Well, you kind of have to, but you really don't. You know, you, you, you take it if you if you can get the record. But of course, you'll, you'll say it's, uh, you know, especially in Pal, everybody's friends. You know, the community, such a great community, so. Uh, you feel bad, but you you relieved that you hit your worst serve and it dribbled over for a winner. You'll take it. Forty-five. Okay. 40-15, two set points, right? Oh, damn. Little couple of loose points there at the end of that set. And, you know, Cooper with a little flyer there on that overhead hasn't hit that many overheads in the set. Floors taking control of most of the overheads all of a sudden. Cooper finds herself over there. And so we are now going to bring in Noah. Aren't we, Noah? Well, we have time. We're not going to bring in Noah. I'm going to tell Dave, why don't you tell us what we're going to do? I think we're going to have a switch over here. We're gonna, the men are going to come over and start playing. We're going to uh, do a raffle in between, though. And we're going to do a raffle in between? All right. So, so we I'm have just going to put Noah all on right, my mind. We have Noah from Xenon Paddles coming on. All right, so we have Noah coming in. Noah, just tell us a little something about the raffle where uh, about to announce the winner here on live stream, two Pro Flight Paddle from Canubra Country Club. Two lucky winners will be getting uh, a brand new Xenon paddle, and then I believe the Women's League also has a raffle. Um, I think they're raffling off some lessons as well as a Xenon bag. You can cut the suspense with a knife right, right now. We're just, wait, we're just waiting, waiting for the knife. raffles. I don't think I put my name on the raffle here. Huh. I don't think I did either, but we have a winner. Oh, okay. We have two winners for the paddles. The winners for the paddles are... Drum roll, please. Matthew Clark and Chris McKeon. And... Noah, you've been kind enough to donate some paddles. So this that's for open raffle. And that after is. the completion of the men's play, I believe the women's league also sponsored some paddles. And we'll go to that after the men's match. Yes, I think they're, they're getting a bag and uh, they are getting uh, some lessons. Yes. Well, that's generous of you. We appreciate it. And good luck with your company. Thank you. And Thank you. I appreciate we'll all the support you, so far. We'll talk to you at the end of this match, Thanks. Noah. Appreciate Thanks so much. Appreciate all the support so far. So, <clears throat> who do we have? Who do we have here warming up, Dave? All right. So the men's match is going to feature uh, Blake Anderson and Martin Bostrom on the far side of your screen, and the uh, team closest to us. You see Drew Broderick at the net, along with his partner will be the one and only Juan Arroyo. What? What, what do I? What do I bring? Bath? So, I think this match is about to get underway. Dave, just in case we're off the air, Dave, can you tell us who we're going to see again? I think we're just back now. Yes, and we, we just kind of went through that. We have uh, Blake Anderson and Martin Bostrom on the far side of the screen. Blake is wearing the light blue pullover. Martin has, I believe that's black or navy blue. And out of the picture right now, well, now you see Juan Arroyo, who will be playing, partnering up with uh, Drew Broderick. This is, I believe, their second or third pairing together for the season. They played out, I believe, in uh, Pro Fly Paddle then, as well as out in Chicago at the charities. And this is a treat. Juan is our defending nas men's national champion with Mark Parsons. Yeah, very exciting display. Um, 
old guys, extremely, you know, extremely talented. Uh, they have all the shots that you could you could hit in this game. So uh, I think it's going to be a very, uh, very fun and exciting game to uh, to watch. And uh, I I can't even tell who's going to take that one. I think it's uh, it's an even. I would say it's a it's a very even matchup right now. So uh, interesting to see how uh, how things go. Anderson and Bostrom have played. They uh, they played Boston. They had a third place finish there. They finished seventh APTA Nationals in Pittsburgh. Um, Blake played with Thomas Nolan in the recent Atlantic Classic, new location up at up Upper Ridgewood, and they had a second place finish there. Uh, Blake and Martin finished ninth at the Short Hills Invitational last year. And we're going to go to a quick commercial here for one minute before the start of play. Success takes hard work. Making success a legacy takes discipline. PPAC Private. Your legacy. Our discipline. Stars. On all these cars. Spot a star on a car and you're looking at a celebrity motor car vehicle. You'll enjoy exclusive red carpet treatment like no other. No matter what luxury brand you choose from celebrity. Look, mommy, no our car is a star. The fastest way to get the status you deserve and the value you expect is to follow the star to a celebrity motor car dealership. Welcome back here to Canubra Country Club Summit, New Jersey for the latest stop on Pro Flight Paddle. I'm here live with Patty Hogan and Mick Adoya. And you're about to see the match Drew Broderick to serve. Drew's playing with Juan Arroyo against Blake Anderson and Martin Bostrom. Wow. He must have watched me volley when I was younger. He told me he never saw you hit a ball, Dave. <laughs> this is a third, third leg on the uh, Pro Flight Paddle Tour. Next up, where are we going, Dave? We are going to Manufacturers Golf and Country Club in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. I heard they, they throw the best party at Pro Flight. Oh, uh, they... They, they had such a great party last year. I heard they throw Best atmosphere. I've ever seen a tournament other than nationals. It was great. JC uh, Cotto. Oh, yeah. Did I yep. say it right? That's oh, the yeah. Host pro, great guy. Uh, always, uh, you know, invites all the pros down there. Great crew, awesome power community. So, um, I don't know. If I make the cut, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to go. So, um, we'll see. One thing to look for uh, Juan. Arroya or Juan Araya. He answers Arroyo. to both. Okay. <laughs> has a knee injury. So uh -huh. I think he's been um, hurting as of late. And uh, I think he's looking to uh, take a little time off the court over the holiday and see if he can uh, see if his tendonitis can improve. Yeah, I think it's interesting, obviously, with Drew and Juan as, uh, you know, probably the two the most dominant players, you know, over the last four, I don't know, how many years there, you tell me, I haven't played that long, but I think it's interesting to see how uh, they're going to figure out their overheads, right? Because they both have so much uh, variety, yeah. variety, and it's kind of like, uh, they, it's almost like they have too many options, so uh, sometimes too many options is uh, could not be good, but uh, they've had some great matches, and, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're definitely one of the best teams if they play together, but uh, and you know, obviously having a lefty in the team makes it uh, more interesting to mix it up. But uh, And we'll I think it's interesting, Mick, um, we haven't really mentioned just the beginning of the game here. It's great overhead. But we have uh, Blake playing the deuce court and Martin over in the ad court for this, this match. Normally they 
Blake plays the backhand side or the ad side. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I think, you know, I've played against Blake and Martin and, you know, they had a great, uh, great season. I think one of the things that makes them so, uh, so good is they're able to switch things around on the baseline depending really who they play and how they play, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a very it's a good dynamics because Martin brings so much offense and uh, Blake is, I would say, if Blake plays on the ad court, uh, I would say he's, uh, he's, in my opinion, he's the best guy on defense on the ad court, right? right? Taking up stuff, so they have so much variety with that, but... But you, get, you play against Juan and Drew, players with so much, so much, so much offense on the overheads. It's, uh, it's definitely interesting how things develop here. I think that's a huge point, Mick and Dave. That you know they can they adapt. They don't have one way to play. They they really can bring out some different tactics, sides of play. Who hits more overheads? Who does this? Um, and you know they they lost a real heartbreaker in the quarters of Nationals last year, um, and there you saw out of that ad court that Bostrom two-handed backhand. I well, mean, I was say, he Patty. Hits, he's a ball striker as pure as there is out here on the men's tour, and he's amazing he's serve yeah, overhead. No. And I think that's going to be a factor. Martin's hit about six or seven backhand rockets coming out of that corner, and you know. Uh, we talk about it all the time. It's, you know, you can hit one or two or three great shots, but can you hit 33? Well, I don't know, but I think Martin can because his hair looks really good tonight. It does. I his feel like great. Yeah. He's got, his hair is like top right. no, five And I'm talking if, if Drew and Juan could, you know, if they can withstand that backhand coming out of there from Martin. I think Martin could keep bringing it, but I don't know how many times you're going to want to give him the opportunity. And I also think that's why Blake and Martin are a good team because, you know, Martin can, you know, he can sometimes play unbelievably and then because of the, the game, the style of game, so he's going to make some errors too, but Blake always kind of keeps the, the consistency level up because he's very steady, so uh, always makes a... Uh, oh, it's a good overhead. And I see, I think, you know, Blake, one of the younger up-and-coming, I don't know if up-and-coming, but he may already be there, you know, one of the top guys in paddle. And, uh, you know, you see how he's looking to try to put that ball away a little bit. He's, you know, putting a little bit of variety, adding some spins. Yeah, these guys are all cutting. If there's anything short, I would say all, and you don't see that that often, but all four guys have a finishing, you know, spin overhead, which is... You know, usually you usually have like one guy, but all those four guys, there's a short log, they're gonna go for a winner. You know, it's just extremely it's fun to watch. Blake told me he's been working on that sidearm serve. He thinks it's easier to hit as a righty into the deuce yep. court than the ad court. Yep. Mick, do you have an easier side for it? Yeah, so I, I only... I only use it with the ad court, actually. Cause Let's go back. We're back on. Hello. I think we're back on. Okay. Are we back on? We're back. We're so back. as a lefty, you it's yeah. easier to serve it into the ad court, or righty easier to serve that into yeah. the juice court. But again, it, you know, it depends on who you play. But I, I feel like I'm able to hit. I'm more effective with my serve as a lefty to the juice court. So a righty would be to the ad court. Then you just move. You use that underhand serve to the side that, uh, you know, you're you're not able to maybe use the screens or or, or mix it up. So. Um, and that's the beauty of it, I think, uh, having options, right? So. Um, and Mick, would you serve over, under, over, under, just based on the side? Absolutely. I okay. even do over, if you say, you know, let's say an underhand or an overhand, even to the at court. So one time, I, if I see the guy gets the rhythm, I'll, I'll throw in uh, an overhand serve. Uh, so um, anything to throw them off, you know, so. Yep, so if they're... If they're feeling it on the return of serves, you got to do whatever you can Correct. to take that away from them a little bit. Yep. And if that doesn't help, I'll just stay back. You know, that's 
Well, and that's the other thing, how, you know, in the last, I don't know, five years, the game has changed where people have a willingness to stay back, and it's not a big deal, where sometimes you can't convince club-level players to stay back. They think it's a terrible thing to give right. up the net. All right, it's a big point. One all, 30 all, so. Oh, great move by Blake. Good move by Blake, good hands. And you don't see Juan getting uh, beat that often. In yeah, Blake just wand Juan. He did. He won the one and only. <laughs> okay, 2-1. So Anderson Bostrom. Yeah, I'll be real curious, Juan, as this match goes through. You can see he's a little frustrated there. You know, he was just talking when he was in the pro shop hanging out before the event started tonight, and he's hurting. And it'll be interesting to see if he can play hurt and just kind of let Drew do more. I think Drew is capable of doing more if, if Juan could maybe take on a different role a little bit. Another loose point. A lot of... A lot of mistakes. Two one thirty love. That's um, that's a uh, that's something where you know a couple of couple more points and they can they can get a, a a lead that is tough to catch up. But and we know it's a game of momentum. So yes, you know if, if they start rolling, they can roll. Doesn't take long. Really good volley there by Martin. Juan may have flagged one there, but good hands by again by Blake up at the net again. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> that wasn't a bad back-to-back -back combination, even if it was from both teams. Yeah, you should send that to ESPN. Do, do you send I that? think ESPN needs that shot. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that's the second time Drew has done that this year. Yeah. Okay. It seems like things just go Anderson and Bostrom's way. Ooh. That could have been a dagger right there. That could have been a dagger. That could have, that could have taken any wind out of the sails that was left. Okay. Now, sometimes I feel like, you know, obviously they're playing well. I think it's almost, if you're playing well and you know, you're, you're feeling the momentum, it's very easy to get caught up with making a couple quick errors. And you can see right away, it's almost... You know, 3 1, La 15, and now it's suddenly 15 40. 15, you know, 40, so it's, 15, it's, right. very, it's, it's a very fair line, you know, uh, when you roll, roll with that, especially when you're playing super offensively. So, um, it almost felt like the set slipping away, and now, you know, Drew and Juan are so experienced that they'll. they'll, they'll right, and how many times have you seen Drew and Juan in a hole? And, they, and, and the other team starts believing they're going to win the set right there. And all of a sudden, they just speed up play, make a couple errors, and then just changes on a dime. Well, I saw one time when Martin and Marco actually were up in West Jersey set to 5-0. I saw that hole. They came back. So, ouch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Marco, if you're watching. <laughs> and see, that's just a loose, goofy error from Blake right four, there. Four errors, actually. Four errors, right? Four quick errors. And that's the thing, you know, we talk about it all the time. You know, most every point ends in a mistake, but they can't be quick. We can't have quick mistakes. You know, it's... Uh, you mean, if you're going to make a mistake, make it later in the point, Dave. 
at like least you, you, you can't know, make a choice to right right because again it's it's the momentum and you know the quicker points they they go by fast you gotta slow it down you gotta, gotta slow the roller coaster down but i think that's such the fine line out here where you can see blake was you know full of smiles a couple points ago and you almost could feel like he was a little too relaxed here and then when you get that relaxed you can either hit easy winners or make easy errors right. it seems I'd like to give a shout out to um, our biggest fan in Dallas. Uh, his name is Dan Regan. He said he's uh, he's watching live stream and he uh, he said he's going to make a comeback at the Nationals this year apparently. So uh, Dan, as my former partner, uh, he's just moved to Dallas to got an awesome job there at Brookhaven Golf Club. So he's threatening to come back, former top ten player. So uh, Armstrong. Correct. So can wait. Hall of Fame Armstrong with our Correct. commentator Mick Erdoya. So can wait to see Dan back on the courts. So apparently, he it's going to happen in the in, in nationals in Connecticut. So Dan, looking forward to it. Does he have a partner, or is he going to play singles? He's on the market right now, so everybody's up there. He's looking for a partner. Maybe Dave. Listen, I I could be um, I could be persuaded. Yeah. And you know what? Connecticut's not too far away. It's within driving distance from it. That's right. That's right. Do you think they would let us play our first three rounds in New Jersey, though? <laughs> well, you might be. It's a big draw, Dave. Maybe they do. Can maybe they do a three round in Kansas. <laughs> and, and, if, and if and if we advance past lunch, yeah, we can drive to Connecticut. <laughs> Not a fiddler, though. No, that that might that's be too <laughs> far away. <laughs> Closer, maybe maybe like. Ridgewood or something. Yeah, yeah. This way we don't yeah. have that far of a drive. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I don't think you guys will qualify this year if you don't play a tournament. You can do Kansas Open. There's a tournament in Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. Yes. APTA, right, Patty? Oh, yeah. yeah. So you and Dan can do a pre, you know, if you qualify, you'll play the national. Ah, the dream team. Dan and Dave. Or would there it be Dave and Dan? Double D. <laughs> I think it's got to be Dan and Dave. Alphabetical. Just double D. <laughs> double D. <laughs> and if we're all Dynamite coming out of double D. And if we're all already doing shout-outs here, I'd like to do a shout-out to uh, Naples, Florida. Um, Mr. Guy Curtis Moore. Uh, our the voice. The voice. Uh, Guy, hope you're doing well. We miss you here. Uh, we miss your comments. Uh, and your uh, maybe you think we could maybe get guy on a call in maybe we can get him uh, to call in give his opinion yeah. on what's going on i think we could i mean guy if you're watching give me a <laughs> give me a text all right all right so we're 15 all here 4 2 big hold big hold for drew and juan here Good shot from our production team, the camera crew, everyone. Yep. Another okay. lob long, another lob long. All right, so 30 15, no, 15 30, sorry. Uh, Juan serving, Juan Araya. Drew was trying the Roxy Cutter there. Didn't get a winner out of it, though. Patty, they're watching live stream. I'm, I'm getting an update. They're watching live stream down at the uh, Bayonne High School Beehive at uh, Bayonne Recreation Men's Adult Basketball League tonight. They've got it on the uh, big screen. Excellent, Dave. Little pro fly paddle. We're, we're, we're adding different cultures to the uh, city of Bayonne. Wow, Blake's just really bringing the forehand out of that corner. I like it. He just handcuffed Juan there. I wonder if we can get an update on the women's match. You know that behind-the-back shot that Drew made a few games ago? 
I feel like he tweaked himself a little bit on that shot. I don't really know, but it seems like he's... Kind of went the wrong way? Maybe. Again, look at Martin's hair. It looks great tonight. Martin's hair is, is pretty, pretty perfect. I wonder if he's going to stay when he starts sweating more. It hasn't moved for about three hours. A and lot again, of product. How did we talk about volleying? Another lob long. No defense for that. It's called silky. Silky smooth. There's, yeah, there's just no defense. And Juan's hurting with his knee. He couldn't, you know, earlier in the match, he took off early when he saw the shot coming. He didn't even make a move there. He, he knew he was no way. You just see what the spin of what it can do. All right, so we have our first set point here. All right, first so set. First set as perfect as Martin's hair, I would even say. I think the hair was the difference. We're going to take a <laughs> break for a minute. And we'll be right back for the second set. Success takes hard work. Making success a legacy takes discipline. PPAC Private. Your legacy, our discipline. One, two, three. What are you guys counting? Stars. stars. Where do you see stars? On all these cars. Spot a star on a car and you're looking at a celebrity motor car vehicle. You'll enjoy exclusive red carpet treatment like no other. No matter what luxury brand you choose from celebrity. Look, mommy, no our car is a star. The fastest way to get the status you deserve and the value you expect is to follow the star to a celebrity motor car dealership. And we are we're back at Canoebrook. This is the third stop on our Pro Flight Paddle Tour. I'm Patty Hogan alongside Dave Broderick. This is the men's match between Blake Anderson and Martin Bostrom and Drew Broderick and Juan Araya. And Bostrom and Anderson won the first set, as you can see. These guys are all teaching pros. Martin's over at Plainfield Country Club. Blake's at Fairmont. Juan is at Greenwich Country Club. Drew is the pro and host right here at Canoebra Country Club. Convincing we, first set, Patty. It was a convincing. A convincing first set. We'd like to thank our sponsors, PPAC Private, Celebrity Motor Car. We've got lots of sponsors, Athleta, and they love the action and the crowd out here. About 200 people have been in and out throughout the night enjoying the action. Patty, we have sponsors Richard Wright from Bleakley Group, Financial Group. We have 23K, UBS, Midnight Paddle. Again, as always, shout out to Mo Morrison out in Chi-Town. Uh, Xenon Paddles, the official paddle ball of Pro Flight Paddle. The New Jersey Women's Paddle Tennis League, Platform Tennis League. And, of course, again, I want to throw it out there. Uh, if you're looking for the holiday shopping, check out Giftagram. Maybe you'll find that something special for the someone special in your life. And I just wanted to give you a quick update on um, from Dallas as it's confirmed that Dan Regan is looking for a doubles partner. And uh, 
if Dave and Dan will play, it will be a team of double Ds. So I uh, just want to put it out there. Dan Dave, is, I think Dan you should start getting in shape now. We're back to the action here. Anyways. Second set. Dan, we hope you get a really good partner. I have to be honest. I might jog home from Canoebrook. I think you should leave. Double Ds are coming. Dan, if you don't hear from me tomorrow, <laughs> you'll know why. And it's not going to be for good reasons. Yo. Yep. All right, so second set. I'll tell you, this thing can go, if they get a good start here, it can go fast. It can go fast. Fast and furious. What would, what would, uh, what do you think uh, Juan and Drew should do right now to come back in this game? Well, I, my opinion is I, I think in the first, you know, in the first uh, set, I think um, Drew and Juan gave Martin and Blake just too many chances to good looks at drives. <laughs> you know, I think they have to they have to eliminate that and, and play safer shots, go to safer spots. So, what does Juan have to do? In the second set, you guys. What do you think? Does he force think, the action, Mick? Does he? I think it does just he take a role of like a setup guy a little bit? You know, with Juan, uh, he's just gonna make his shots. You know, like I think with Juan, it's pretty simple. He's gonna go for it, and uh, you know, if he's gonna make it or or not. You know, I think he's. Uh, I don't think he's going to slow down necessarily. I don't think he's, he's really able to do that much. But, uh, so he doesn't embrace kind of changing. He's got a way to play. Yeah. Oh. And hopefully make make a few more drives, make you know a few more plays, really. Because Drew is really gonna not going to go away. You know, like Drew is going to play his, his, his role, especially on the baseline. That's a good shot. But I also think, too, as much as we talk about the advantage of having the lefty righty hitting the overheads i think sometimes they're they're moving the ball around too much um you know and that's creating the movement at the net and here we go first game we have a break point already so that's the one martin was hitting earlier on and that's uh, what I, i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you so rem remember that one drive here okay that's a classic yeah. hopefully it goes well but just keep that one drive in your mind. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. That's the shot we might kind of have to come back. Okay. It's a good overhead. Again, we talked about it. You know what? That's a not a the highest percentage shot, but Juan's going to go for it. You know, Juan's... Yep. What a volley right there from Drew. Got it. And I, I do have to say one thing, you know, Juan or, you know, I think Martin is a similar type of player where, you know, they kind of go for their shots. And I'll tell you this, it's a lot easier to go for your shots when you're playing when you're playing in front, right? So meaning when you're when you're up, I think it's tough to go for your shots when you're 4-2 down or, you know, so I think uh, I think for this match, I think it's huge for Juan and Martin, who are, I would say, more of a, a guys on the baseline making the plays to to get it to get in front or, or to get the lead. Scott's a good get. I feel like Juan and Drew at least have gone that part where they're trying to set up Drew to take more overheads. <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of the issue when those guys play a little bit. They, they do fight for that middle ball. And we've seen Drew take Oof. a million of those over the years. And when he plays with Palmer, Palmer will back off that shot where Juan wants to hit that overhead. Great shot. See, and again, I think the ball's moving side to side. 
and it's creating openings and spots for Blake and Martin. And I think with Juan a little bit, kind of that we know his knee's hurting, you just don't see as much movement, and he can't take the risks that he usually takes, where he'll just hit a shot, dart to the net, create plays for himself. He's just not able to do that tonight so far. You know, Blake and Martin, they're, they're playing well. They're not giving him anything. Yep. Okay. I think Martin's probably finished about eight shots. Yeah. Right? I don't think he's missed one, so, you know, that's two games of winning overheads. And uh, let me tell you, it's a lot easier to finish again when you're up 6 2, 1 love. You know. Wow, we see two faults here. We lost our pro flight umpire. Uh, Noah had a meniscus surgery, Dave, recently. So he's not able to go up in that chair. So we just said, forget it. It's Noah or no one. No. And so That's we've it. gone with no one tonight as the umpire. That guys would have been gals. tough. That would have been tough, Patty, for him to jump into the chair like he normally does with the bad wheel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a rough visual, Dave. Okay, so is it is it 30 or 30 40? You see Juan getting a little active over there. Good to see. A little bounce in a step. Yeah, yeah. A little bounce in a step. <laughs> That's a cutter. Oh, and he ran for that ball. He saw it coming early from Blake. You know, I, I think... That's a good ball. Yeah, he just got twisted around there and couldn't make that move for that ball. I'll tell you, Blake and Martin are just, they're seeing the next shot before it's getting hit. Ooh, oh. he read it well. They, Broderick and Araya were lucky there. See how Blake's, Blake's really closing the net, doing a good job. I think, yeah, you know, we spoke about different types of volleys. I think uh, Blake is a, and same I would say like Drew, they're very good when they're on top of the net volleying. You know, when the ball is coming hard at you, I think right. they're very steady. They don't even flinch, you know, so... Uh, Another spin overhead there for Martin. That caused an error. Okay. And again, you know, just a little bit of, you know, well, it was a lot of spin that Martin hit on that serve, but that impacted Juan just because of his injury. It's funny, I think Juan and Juan and Drew are hitting the spin overheads, but Blake and Martin are winning points off of them. I think Juan's just got to let Drew take over the overheads. And I don't think that's going to happen. He said it. Oh, boy. So all we can say about that one is, oh, boy. What do they say in football? Wide left? <laughs> Wide right? True or false? Ten years in America? Have I ever attended a football game in my life? False. Never attended a football game. I think you want to take me? 
I'm going to take you to one. I'll, yeah. I'll explain the rules and yeah. everything, Mick. Do you really want to shit through one of the local team's games? I mean, would it be Jets or the Giants, Mick? <laughs> Jets are playing tonight. They have a huge game against the Ravens. I'd go with Jets, probably. I know a couple guys. I met a couple guys from there from my club. So no way. Go. I think the Ravens are going to crush them tonight. My husband uh, has a big birthday tomorrow. He is the ultimate Jets fan. He's so happy I'm not home tonight <laughs> so that he can just watch the Jets game. Okay, 2 0 30 all. We might be able to switch it up back to the women's match here. I was going to say, we may, we may be, what do you call it? We may be starting the Jets up. <laughs> you might be <laughs> home for the football here, Patty. <laughs> you might be jetting out of here. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Drew. When have you played a match under an hour, ever? Yeah, but how about Eli Manning? Lives locally in Summit here. He, amazing first half. I know you didn't watch the game, Mick. Last week, Dave, did you watch that game? I did not, but but I saw the highlights, and they... Um uh, he lit it up. <laughs> Hopefully, Eli's out there. Big paddle fan, I hope. Maybe come on over to Canoe Brook. Check yeah. out the action Eli live. Come, Eli, come over. Come Get over, it. Eli. We'll make <laughs> you the starter. Get a couple of hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got great food. Let's see, we have great stadium food. <laughs> I almost think to a little bit when when Martin and Blake if you notice they're alternating who they're hitting lobs to yep. and Drew and Juan are hitting the ball almost side to side to side I think you know <coughs> playing with lefty is um, it has to be a little bit more uh distinguish who's hitting overhead right you know i think with the righty righty that's a so it's so easy to yeah. know there's an overhead person but with lefty righty it definitely has to be more obvious even when you look at the game who's hitting overhead when you look at that like blake was there before the ball bounced right blake well, is a slash, student he's of live stream he plays he watches he, he knows everyone's shots their tendencies I don't think he watches as much as Bill Belichick of the tape, Dave. A legend, Bill alleged, Belichick Patty, is? a legend that they were taping the sideline. Mick, do you know he who Bill, of Bill it. Belichick is? Of it. I do know that name, though. Okay. But that's about it, though. That's the only name I know. Okay. Do. So Patty, how Blake is the Bill Belichick. He, he knows everyone's tendencies. <laughs> and the Jets are losing 21-7. Second period. The, the Ravens are 11-2. Jets 5-8. Patty, no how, surprises. Can, how can New England be taping the sideline of the other team when they're back in the locker deflating the footballs? Dave, you've got to be able to multitask when you're professional. All right, so 2-1. I believe it was 2-0-30-40. Martin had that big backhand drive. I didn't call it because I messed up my first well, one. Well, I was going to say, because you had called it on the low forehand that he had, one yeah. step over in the middle, low bouncing ball. But then he had Drew on the one step inside the service line, and he missed the two-hander in the net. I was going to say something, Mick, but I thought you were going to. Yeah, I, I, I messed up my first one. but I also think the speed of play. If you watch, you know, Blake and Martin are hitting their drives at a harder pace, and Drew and Juan just, they're not. And you look at Drew. He's working it the whole time. He spots those shots. Thirty love. We might need Timo out here. Good return there by Juan. A shout out going out to Pat Driscoll, Fiddler's Elbow. You know, one of the things last year I saw it with Anderson and Bostrom, and they haven't played as much this year. I feel like at times they can be as effective as any team as volleyers. They'll form a wall, stay in their backhands, and just be rock solid. Yeah. And you see Drew hitting a ton of probing shots and just not getting anywhere. 
And when things are going your way, yes, they it. keep going your way, it seems. 40-15. Another let court. Another let court. Let's get another let court. I think that was, th actually, that was another <laughs> one. I think that was four let courts in a row. Ah, oh, Drew that was hoping for a let court. four let courts in a row. Okay. All right, it's 1-3. You see the speed of the drives. It's just, it looks different. Yeah, Blake's crushing. That's the first one they've missed. But I do have to say one thing games. is, you know, for Drew's and Juan's side is, I don't think they really have a set plan or how to, you know, there are definitely more safe spots. I feel like they're, they're not as organized or maybe in the same page with their overhead. So that's why it feels like Martin and Drave are, uh, Martin and Blake are, um, you know, they have so many looks for the drive, so uh, I don't know. Uh, I feel like Drew and Juan can probably do a better job of neutralizing those drives. So Another one, but right? Look at that. So I mean, he's just, they're just teeing off. They're seeing the ball. Let's see. That's better. Even like that, though, we saw another big forehand by Martin through the middle. You heard Drew say, give it up. I mean, Juan, get back. But this is a time in so many matches where I've seen uh, where Drew just, like, digs in deeper, Dave. And yep. I'm guessing, growing up with Drew, he never gave up in a game of bingo. No. He was a big shoots and ladders guy in Candyland. What's that? Oh, you yeah, don't know Candyland, Mick? A little no. board game. <laughs> you didn't want to be on the chocolate slide, let's just put it that way. You were going down, you were sliding down the chute, the chocolate chute. <laughs> so Anderson Bostrom won the first set 6-2. They're up 3-2, second set. Bostrom to serve. Coming to you live from Canubra Country Club, Summit, New Jersey. No doubt. Yeah, a little wide. You know, and the thing with Juan, as we've seen so many times, it just takes him one or two shots, and all of a sudden, his whole... He's back, he's back. Yep. He's back. His temperament, you just feel that bounce. We felt it a little bit earlier. And I'll tell you one thing that, you know, every level of player cannot forget that the closer to the finish line you get, oh. There it is again. <laughs> the closer to the finish line you get, the harder it is to, you know, to, to close out the game or the match. So, uh, and especially against the better players, because exactly. they know that the end is near. Yeah. They can't afford to make mistakes. You know, so even if, even if this, the team ahead wins, they're going to have to earn it. No one's giving away free points. When it starts getting tighter later in the match. What's amazing about um, Bostrom and Anderson's play on the baseline here, like Juan's hitting all sorts of spins, and these guys are just handling everything. I was going to say, Juan just hit seven winners and a ball still in play. Right, and Mick's point earlier about what a good, you know, Blake can just kind of dig and so scrappy out of the corners. I do have to say one thing that, you know, when Juan is in those overheads, I think... Uh, and maybe it's because of his injury or but he's not really waiting for the short one to finish i feel like he's a you know like i feel like martin has hit those eight winners that the ball has been short juan is a little bit forcing it to to finish the point so he's not really getting that cut on that finishing touch right so um, yeah. i'd like to wait him out like maybe one or two more and then finish it because you know he's as you know he's probably the best finisher in the game so See Blake and Martin switching it out on the baseline. Uh -huh. Like that, right? So that's not really the ball to go to finish. Right, it's kind of deep in the court. It's yeah. a tougher shot. Especially not at 15-40, 2-3. 
Right, but he's got to hit enough pace on his overheads, and I think he, you know, with his right knee kind of hurting, I just don't think he can kind of bear down on that shot. That was a pretty like big ball by does. Martin. That was a, that was a good backhand. <laughs> They're just hitting it at a different level speed. Okay. Oh, 40 30. Yeah. I would say that's an, a big point. Patty, what do you think? I think it's a huge that's point. That's a blitz. Good move by Juan. Like Patty, you said earlier, you know they're gonna they'll find the way. They'll, you know they're gonna they're not gonna go away. Yeah. You see, Drew continues to lob that ball sort of in between Martin, pulling him over a little bit. I'd nice actually. Show overhead. I, I'd love to see Drew out of that ad court, lob some more balls cross court, and actually get Martin going more to his left. I think Drew has spotted the shot beautifully, but between Blake and Martin, and Blake's never getting in Martin's way there. So I don't know. Maybe some lobs could open up the court for him a little bit. I feel like they're packed in there, and there's there's nowhere to go for, for Drew's drive. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. Flight 2 is about to take off. <laughs> You see again another big drive, like we talked about. It's just the pace of the pace of drives is totally different. Not forty. I think at five two. I think uh, we start the bus. I think we turn the car on. I think Patty will make it home for the end of the football game. Like that, it's just big. Everything's big. Yeah. Dave, I think we need a shout out to Rob, don't you? Rob. Mars County. Rob Scanone. Rob Scanone is doing a great job with men's league, Chatham High School's team. Yep. He's enjoying the buffet. We'd get him on the live stream, but he's got his mouth full again. Every time I look over. Like, look at that. It's just it's I would a lot say, of speed, right? I would say that, you know, I think both of them, but I, I, I can't remember. Blake made a mistake last last time, you know, so he's, he's being Blake's playing. Blake's drive percentage here off his forehand. Volleys, you know, he's made a lot of volleys. Uh, Martin's been clean the whole match, like his hair. I think his, it's got to be the hair. I mean, I think it's whatever gone. product he's gone to. Yep. Really could be that, that product could be the right now. Thing. Even I saw him going back and he's, he didn't flinch. It didn't you know flinch. what they say? They look good, feel good, play good. Yeah, he he literally went back for the ball and didn't flinch. So, well, Dave, you've got some product going tonight. I, I do. I, I, I do. asked Dave if he would wear a Santa hat and he said, No, I'm doing my hair tonight. That's right. I was ready to go, but you didn't get me. Uh, so. Here you go, man. I've great. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna hooking you I'm gonna up now. For, I'm gonna wait for this game to end. Now. Okay. How about this? Yeah, style, if, they, if, if they come back, cream, if they come back, Fiddler's Elbow Men's Locker Room. If they come back, I'll wear that hat the whole day on Saturday at the League Classic. <laughs> okay, so if this goes three, you're wearing Santa no, no, hat. No, 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 you got to win. They got to come back yeah. and win. And on the junior tournament on Sunday. I think if it goes three, Mick. Oh, right, why not? I'll do it. But definitely yeah. during the junior tournament, I want sure. you to take yeah. that hat. Yep. And we've got about 60 kids. Correct. Yes. Playing in the Essex Fells Junior this weekend. Mick Erdoya, the second year you've run the Essex Fells Junior, I think. Oh. Well, Patty, I just want to give a quick shout out to Pat Kelly, PK out there watching in TV land. Well, Dave, just before we forget about that. PK, it's the end of the match here. No, <laughs> they, uh, they closed it out. And, you know, again, it, it comes back to we talked before about how Martin and Blake were hitting overheads for winners. Juan just went for a slash overhead winner and 
Martin hit him with a forehand. So, I mean, just amazing play from Martin Bostrom, Anderson. Very few unforced errors. Totally clean match, as you guys referred to. Martin's hair was the difference. It's perfect. Patty, when was the last time you said that a team won the match? Because they won that match. Yep. Well, Usually we tell everyone, you know, somebody loses. But you know what? They won that match. We have not gotten word on who won that women's match. I believe we're going to go to... All right, so, so Patty, we have confirmation. Again, Roxy Anika is the winner of another pro flight event. With 10 Lauren. 8 in the third, third set breaker. 10 8? 10 8. 10 8. It went the distance. Overtime. Not like the jet game. So I think we have one more raffle for some Xenon paddles here, but I'm not sure if we're okay. going to be ready to go before we go off the air. That's a great shot of the Paddle Hut over here at Canoebrook. Totally appreciative crowd. And true to form, Drew said that this event would be a three-hour Pro Flight Paddle event tonight on the air from 6.30 to 9.30. And just like that, I guess we're going to wrap it up here from Canoebrook. Patty, do you want to maybe take we'll take a commercial? Do we have that um, raffle coming out? Maybe we can take a commercial okay, break. Okay, why don't we come back in one minute and we'll see if the raffle's we'll, ready. We'll wrap it up and we'll call it a night. Where do you see stars? On all these cars. Spot a star on a car and you're looking at a celebrity motor car vehicle. You'll enjoy exclusive red carpet treatment like no other, no matter what luxury brand you choose from celebrity. Look, Mommy, no our car is a star. The fastest way to get the status you deserve and the value you expect is to follow the star to a celebrity motor car dealership. Success takes hard work. Making success a legacy takes discipline. PPAC Private. Your legacy. Our discipline. So we're back from Canoebrook just to wrap things up here from Pro Flight Paddle. I'm Patty Hogan with Dave Broderick, and we're joined quickly by Roxy Anika. Roxy, congratulations on another win in Pro Flight Paddle. What were the scores of your match over Cooper and Hanish? It was 7-5, then we're down 5-0, and then we lost 7-5 the second set, and we played a tiebreaker to 10, and we won 10-8. 10-8, how exciting, and what yes. happened at 8 all? No, we're up 10-4, uh, no, 9-4, and then they came back, um, and we're able to finally hold and finish it. Oh, wow. Well, yes. congratulations, Thank Roxy. Thank you. And um, this is an interesting format with mix going into women's play. What did you think about this? Oh, I love the mix. I wish they had that more often in more tournaments. I feel like, uh, you know, the guys get to hang out with the girls and vice versa, and it's, uh, it's great for the sport, and um, I think everybody that was here enjoy so much more uh you know watching both uh, the ladies and the men but also the mix was packed outside so uh, that was impressive oh it was great to you know let all of you women showcase your talents here we love watching you guys play and you know canoebrook was so excited about the whole event but in particular seeing the top women play so congratulations yeah. roxy thank you that was fun and dave any uh recap from you here tonight no just a great night of paddle here at canoebrook country club summit new jersey Great crowd, um, and again, I think this was just a, you know, most of the time on the uh, live stream, we see a lot of intensity, a lot of focus, uh, you know, tonight I think, again, everybody was trying to win, but I think it was a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere, 
we got to see a lot more cut shots. We saw more people going for winners, uh, which I think kind of the crowd wants to see. You know, sometimes people aren't necessarily worried about winning and losing or who's winning and losing. They just want to see good paddle. And Dave, can you talk about who the raffle winners are from the New Jersey Women's Platform League? Yes, so we have um, we have some lessons that we are oh we have some lessons raff- that raffling we're raffling off yep. uh, for the New Jersey Women's Platform Tennis League, and I think the first winner uh, lesson with Martin Bostrom is Alyssa Cordry. Okay, um, from Clearwater. From Clearwater, yeah, been in the uh, league a long time, playing veteran player. Uh, we have a lesson with Lauren Gebbia. One by who, Dave? And I believe Pam that Burke? is Pam Burke. Okay. Pam Burke won the lesson with uh, Lauren Gebbia. Okay. And our last winner of tonight will be a lesson with Blake Anderson. And that's Lori Palam- Palamaki. Where does she play out of, Dave? Do you know? I, I don't know. That one slipped by me. Okay. Surprise! Uh, something slipped by you. You know, it's yeah. No, no. I, I know a lot of people. I, I don't know them all. But uh, congratulations to Pam, Alyssa, and Lori on your uh, winning lessons. And thanks to Xenon Paddle for their sponsorship for their paddles. Congratulations to Roxy. And we wish everyone a happy holiday, healthy holiday season. And we'll see you in the new year. Manufacturers Golf and Country Club. January 18th. January 18th. That's it for now. Happy holidays, everyone.